Say sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to haters. Now they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Random. Right. He's a Jeep. But that's the best part. Sometimes when you're somewhere randomly, you end up being in a clip <laughs> with it. you. That's it. And that's yep. what Larry Elder did. Anyways, episode today's what, Rob? What number are we on? 305. Shout out to Miami. Wow. 305. Yeah, he's he's a special one. School area Let's go. We, we got Florida. a lot to a talk about. It's home team. Day. By the way, just so everybody knows, this Thursday, the podcast this thir- Thursday is going to be myself with two Muslims that I'm invited to have a friendly discussion with two folks who will go give their perspective from the uh, POV and challenges they see in Muslim. And Muslim friends are going to come here, have the discussion, which is going to be fantastic. And then uh, I'm looking forward to that. We've already had a lot of discussions behind closed doors for this to be done. We'll be doing many, many more of these. It'll be myself with the four of them this Thursday. I'll put that in your calendar tomorrow, 9 a.m., we're launching the Tom Brady interview. It's finally going nice. to be released tomorrow, which is going to be epic. So for some of you that wanted to really see it, it's going to go out tomorrow. Some of the things I asked Tom, which ring was more important, the seven rings? Was it more to get one more than Belichick, or was it more important to get one more than Michael? You'll have to see to see which one you think the answer was. But uh, aside yeah. from that, we've got a lot of things to talk about today. We got the, U, uh, uh, the, uh, the UAW strike that's taking place right now. 13,000 employees, workers, um, part of the uh, 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 union uh, went on a strike. It's not looking good. We got a lot of things to talk to you about with that. Uh, another one is man arrested in su- uh, suspected assassination attempt at RFK Jr. And wait till you see how quickly the government uh, moved to give uh, a Kennedy who's running for president uh, Secret Service protection. Then Denver homeless camp features pop-up bars with rentable, ready, prostitution tents. Okay, we'll talk about that. Nice. A timetable of sexual assault <laughs> allegations. Again, Russell Brand. Uh, Americans are least likely, ready? This is from CNBC. To care about kids having good manners. Here's what they prioritize instead. We'll talk about that. Donald Trump likes the concept of picking a female running mate for presidential race. Donald Trump wished liberal Jews a happy new year by accusing them of destroying America. That didn't make a lot of people happy. Nice. Uh, this, this, there was a, by the way, we have to talk about Beetlejuice to show how special it is. I mean, it's so special. It's arousing people. It's <laughs> exciting them to, to get down and dirty. I love it. And fool around with each other. Have you taken somebody on a Beetlejuice date? I've, get a, I, n- because but, of this situation? <laughs> can, you, can you imagine you go on, you just say, hey, so, hey, uh, Mary, would you like to go watch Beetlejuice together? You know, yeah. that's like your way of talking. Dirty. She's I can like, only imagine. She's like, like, oh my God, it's going down. <laughs> it's, going no, it's amazing. Down. You want to go Beetle to dinner, juice. have Beetle a stiff juice. drink, go out to the club <laughs> and everything, and then just, just see a, a great play that just penetrates the soul. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's so, Tom again. So Very AOC, Tom. AOC uh, video shows AOC confronted by furious news, uh, uh, New Yorkers. Uh, Sanders, Bernie Sanders, you guys ready for this one? Serious discussions should take place on the four-day work week. Yes, sir. We're going to go work four days, but get paid for five days. That math makes a lot of sense. What a The, the genius behind socialists is just something else on a whole different level. Huh. Chinese spy uh, threat to U.S. Congress amplified. Here's another one. Then there were two. The disappearance of second Chinese minister sparks speculation, Financial Times. Zelensky, guess what he's doing here? He came to his uh, private equity guys to meet with them. This private equity firm is called the White House. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> he's, he's, he's coming. We'll, he's we'll, coming we'll to talk collect. about that. Yeah. Uh, I need some walking around. Uh, Biden's uh, accusing the automakers of a lot of clear. crazy things. Biden economic policy have quite, quietly made po- people's lives better. This is an insider story. Then Fox News story says, voters say White House doing more harm than good on inflation. Googlers. Two words you can no longer use at Google. Maybe we'll talk about that. You can no longer use words such as share and bundle. <laughs> it's offensive to use what? those words. What? Obviously, the jet that was missing, a $100 million jet that went missing. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's, you know, it's just, hey. Whatever. Can, can you guys just look for it? Can, can you? You're asking Pentagon us. asking you and I. <laughs> for, for a stealth. We'll give you a $5 <laughs> Starbucks card. <laughs> Go find the jet. And it's the one with the most advanced <laughs> technology. Yeah. yeah so, so it's and not it, a trainer. And last yeah. but not least, 7,000 people arrive on Italian island of 6,000. Oh, my God. As migrant crisis overwhelms. Something's got to Lampedusa. Can you imagine? 
guys, there's only 6,000 people. That's like 330 million people live in America. 340 million people show up here as migrants. Listen, we got to take them. We got to take care of these guys. Anyways, all right, let's go with the main story here. You, uh, A... W strike will be felt beyond Detroit. National Association of Manufacturers warns this is not good on what's going on over there. Uh, uh, the National Association of Manufacturers has issued a warning about the United Auto Workers strike against Detroit's big three automakers, Ford, GM, and Stellantis. Stellantis is like Chrysler, Fiat, Jeep, highlighting the broader economic repercussions it may have beyond Detroit. NAM President Jay Timmons emphasized that the strike would affect the integrated supply chain of small and medium-sized manufacturers across the country, impacting both union and non-union shops and adding to the economic pressures caused by high inflation. The potential economic consequences of an extended strike are significant, with the estimates suggesting that a full shutdown of manufacturing operations at all three automakers for just 10 days could cost the U.S. economy $5.6 billion. Individual automakers facing pr- uh, production stoppages could incur weekly earning losses of, ready, four to $500 million. Tom, what is going on here? Well, the first thing is I think Rob can probably find a chart somewhere on this. The whole UAW hasn't gone on strike yet. This is just a subset. 13,000 of them. Yes, this is the photo op. The members, all members is 400,000. This is 13,000 going on a strike. So this is the photo op to say we're freaking serious. And so here they come out for the photo op. But there's something else going on here. It's not like the big three didn't see the contract negotiations coming. And it's not like the big three don't know that in 2009, everybody except Ford, a CEO at the time, Alan Mulally, took U.S. money. You're nodding at him. I hope I'm getting that right. During the recession, yes. And now it's not like the big three didn't get some assistance during COVID. They did. And they've rebounded and made some good props profits, moved over to EVs. So they saw this coming and maybe behind closed doors, they were trying to give something. Maybe they weren't, but the UAW seems really pissed off, which is normally the way they wake up in the morning anyway. (laughs) But, but to me, this is just the photo op. And yesterday the quote was, there could be more widespread impact of this. You saw that yesterday. But have you seen what they're asking for? And have you seen what they are? Correct. Now comes the punchline. Stellantis Chrysler claims that they were on the right as these pickets were coming out. The photo op was starting, yeah. like the third day of it. Stellantis says, we went in and offered 21% you know, wage increase over, I think, 36 months. They were like, screw you. We want 40% over, was it over? They won 36% over four years. Mm-hmm. Four years. So Ford and GM offered 20%. Stellantis, 17 and a half. Then they went to 21. Now they're asking for 36 because they're asking... 36 because the CEO made 34% increase in her salary over the last three or four years. And they want the similar growth for increase in their salary as the CEO got. So it's a little bit of a uh, 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 pickle on uh, how they want because they're seeing what happened with, uh, with uh, what do you call it, the UPS strike, how successful they were. Yeah. Great time to capitalize. Like 100 grand driving a brown truck. That's right. And Biden said, Biden said. I'm, I'm going to be the biggest pro-union president of all time, right. and all these unions are seeing it as an opportunity to capitalize off of it because the next guy may not be a pro-union guy. And Obama came out of hiding and goes up there and says, you know, they're making a lot of profits here, and I think it's time to give some of those back. And so he kind of threw a little you know, bacon on the grease fire you know, two days ago where, when he walked out. Uh, and so, you know, there's something to be said. Is, is there a blend line here that says, hey, the auto industry bounced back a little bit. Profits were up. You know, is it time to negotiate this and do a little bit more for workers, especially at a time with high inflation? I think there is. But I also think that the UAW probably wasn't having any of it. You could have made the best offer you wanted for them, and I think they were heading out to strike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me give a, maybe a little more context. My dad's from Detroit. My family's from Detroit. Like, I have family, friends in the Motor City, baby. I mean, that's you talk about the big three. When you, you know, I had to look who the hell Stellantis because it's Ford, it's GM, and all of a sudden it's Stellantis. If you remember, they're Daimler Chrysler. They 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 merged and it was part of a German company, Daimler Chrysler, whatever. But that's the big three. And for many many years, this was what made America tick. You know, starting with Henry Ford and the uh, the initial car that he made. What is it called? The T, the F. Whatever it was Model called. Model T. Model T. There it is. So here's why it has implications of what's going on. Because if you're out there and be like, dude, I don't really give a shit about the United Auto Workers. I've never even heard of these guys. Here's why this matters. Number one, it's going to affect 
2024 <laughs> and the election. Why? Because the Pat hit the nail on the head. Uh, here's a main story from Wall Street Journal right now. UAW strike collides right with Biden's manufacturing agenda. So on one hand, Biden is very pro-union, right? He's pro-union. And on the other hand, he's talking about bringing manufacturing back, specifically in the EV sector, right? You did a whole case study on Tesla, uh, what's going on, China, competitive mm -hmm. markets, what's going on with that. So where is the UAW located or where where are these cars being built well the rust belt michigan okay uh pennsylvania ohio these are what is known as battleground states in the election i mean 20 yeah. 2008 2012 they went obama 2016 they went trump well, 2020 they went back to biden this is arguably the most important part of the country when it comes to the electorate so if you're like i don't really give a shit about a car or whatever it's going to affect the election if you appease these people or not, especially the union. So um, Biden, you know, he did everything with the Inflation Reduction Act, which was just sort of a, a, a mini Green New Deal, if you recall that. That's yeah. kind of how they factored that. And he also did the CHIPS Act. So this is all kind of part of the manufacturing situation that's going on in America. All right. Now let's get down to. Like what? Why this matters to you beyond politically? So you hit the nail on the head. They they want I think 35, 40 percent raise over four years. They want a 32 hour work week. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so they want to make more and work less. No, they don't want a 32. They want to they want to work 32 hours but get paid for 40 hours. Yeah. Okay. So it's not they want a 32 hour work week. They want to get paid. Pat, for 40, 40 hours for 32 hours. By the way, you know what? So do I, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's like Just getting kidding. the great raise. That's like the great uh, equalizer uh, raise right. on top of your money raise. But he here's where this comes down to supply and demand, right? When we talk about raising the minimum wage, we talk about, you know, fight for 15. What happens if you pay these guys more? Okay. So the car prices, if you've seen what's going on with the car prices, Pat, don't worry. I'm not going to start advocating. Everyone start Ubering, but you should. Uh, car prices since COVID have gone up 20, 25 mm percent. -hmm. The average car payment for a new car in 2019 was what, 550 Five, four, bucks? Yep. Now it's 750 bucks. Gas is at an all time high, you know, dealing with that, everything with Ukraine, whatever with that. Again, bouncing again. Up again. Putin so price hike. That's so Putin if you price pay hike. these guys more and they basically succumb to demands, how much more are they going to charge the consumers for cars and chips and auto and everything with that? So it's a really slippery slope. Last point here. Um, you talk about um, how much it's costing if they go on a 10-day strike. If it costs the economy, if they go, it costs $5 billion a day. That's 15 to $20 billion a month that are we costing the economy, supply chain, you know, trucks, drivers, everything that goes into that. But specifically, the auto industry could lose between 400 and 500 million a week. That's two billion bucks a month. And uh, the auto industry makes up 3% of America's total GDP. A couple things here. Very good points, by the way. Rob, can you pull up that uh, chart I sent you that I think Tom used on a recent case study here? So private sector union membership has declined sharply in the U.S. Look at this. 1972, mm -hmm. Tom pointed out it was at 24.2% on the private sector. Right now it's at 6%. What does this tell you? Americans are realizing, stay the hell out of my business union. By the way, a couple mm -hmm. things you got to be thinking about outside of this. Why is this such a big deal? So this, this UAW was founded by this guy named Walter Reuter. If you don't know this guy's history, he was the president for like 24 years. Insane guy. He's John F. Kennedy sent him to go negotiate with Castro on the, you know, uh, uh, one of the hostages. LBJ leveraged this guy hardcore. Richard Nixon said the only way that John F. Kennedy won is by owing a guy like this a favor. This guy's like Jimmy Hoffa on steroids is who this guy is, Walter Reuter. He was killed. He had two attempts on assassination. He died on a plane crash. He's like a legit tough guy who was an incredible politician. If you hear him speak, you're going to say this guy could have run for office. He was that good at what he did. Walter Reuter, Reuter, you can pronounce him any different way. So, so here's, here's what he gets technical. In the 88 years of this you know, union being around. And remember, it's not just cars. It's 400,000 mem 400, members because it's many different industries that are a part of it. It's not just cars we're talking about. It's, you know, automotive, aerospace, and other industries. So we say auto workers, but it's a massive union. Started mm -hmm. small, and now it's massive. In the 88 years, there's never been a time where these three companies have simultaneously 
been targeted by a strike. Never in 88 years. Simultaneously, it's not been GM, Ford, and Stellantis. You know, it's never happened before. So that's a big deal. Number two, a total of 61 plants have been announced that they're going to be shut down. 61. 61 so you got GM saying 33 on their end, idle plants. Ford's got 18. And you got Fiat Chrysler's going to have another 10. This is going to affect around 50,000 jobs, give or take. Uh, the economy is going to fill it. Now, the, the good news, bad news. What's the, what's the good news? The good news is the longest strike they've had in the recent years was in 2019. It lasted 40 days. Okay. They're going to have to figure, figure out a way to uh, negotiate this. What's the bad news? The bad news is there's a guy named Bob Iger right now, and there's another strike going on with writers, uh, uh, you know, uh, actors, what is it, Actors writers, Guild like, and yeah. actors that they've been going. I think writers been since May 12th, which yeah, is yeah. almost four months. Wow. Actors been since July 14th or something, so that's two months. Bill Maher wanted to bring his show back. I'm going to bring you back. I'm not going to bring you back. It's not going to be as good. Writers are going to be good. Drew Barrymore went through what she's <laughs> going through. Right. And then UPS got what they got with the whole salary. They're going to make $100,000 to be a driver. So, again, they're capitalizing today. The pressure is all on one party and one individual right now. Okay? The party is the Democratic Party, and mm -hmm. the individual is Joe Biden. <clears throat> Yesterday, uh, Stephen King tweeted something out. If you can go on Twitter, Rob, I retweeted this guy. Yesterday, he said the following. Here, here's what he said yesterday on Twitter. Stephen King, the writer. Hey, Stephen King, the writer. Guy, Just uh, go to my second tweet. If you Steve go, Hawk. go up, go there. You go, they go down a little bit. Go down a little bit. Right there. Zoom in right there. His tweet is: Mary Barra, CEO of General Motors, makes 29 million a year. I retweeted and I say: Stephen King, the king of horror, has estimated net worth of 500 million dollars. <laughs> wow. Okay. So here's a guy yeah. that's a socialist worth a half a billion dollars talking shit about another girl. A female. Female CEO of a Fortune 500 company making $29 million a year, which, by the way, good for them for making their money. Good. Here's a crazy thing to be thinking about. One of the reasons why I respected this guy named Bob and Moshe, AIG CEO. I was there when these guys went to the government and asked for $183 billion. When AIG was about to go out of business, the American International Group, the most hated company in America in 2009, 2010. It was so bad that they would tell us when you're selling insurance, don't say AIG, say American General. Don't use our logo. That's how bad it oh, was. Wow. Bob and Moshe comes in. We're in uh, Chicago at the Ritz-Carlton, I believe. We're having dinner. It's my, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, David Herzog, the CFO of AIG, who used to be the CFO, I believe, of American General, or was that? Uh, anyways, but he was the CFO of AIG. If you type in David Herzog, CFO, CEO, CFO, you'll see the guy was making very good money. They come in, they ask for $183 billion from the government. This guy's got three years left to live, Bob and Moshe. He's on his deathbed, living at his vineyard in Croatia, Dubrovnik. Used to be the former CEO of MetLife, okay? What ends up happening? He comes back. They take the 183, they end up paying the 183 back and $21 billion of interest, give or take. And then he dies. Wow. The announcement was made at an award ceremony of ours on a Friday night time. I don't know if you remember that. I remember it very when clearly. When Mark, Mark got up and he said, got some bad news for you, Bob Ben Moshe has just died. But his legacy lives on. So the part where Stephen A. King, Stephen King has a point is GM never paid the taxpayers back, hmm. and she's still making $29 million a year. Hmm. So a socialist is trying to make a point, but unfortunately the point where he's right is the fact that the people that got money from the government, those are the same guys that haven't paid back, but AIG ended up paying yeah. back, and that guy's a true capitalist. Hmm. There's a bunch of things going on here with UAW. What's going to end up happening here is there's a lot on the line with politics. I don't think this is going to go that long. I think they're going to figure this thing out fairly quickly. I think 20%, they're asking for 36%. Uh, you got to know what this means. If you're making $100,000 a year, you know where you're going to go to? 136. <laughs> if you're making 30 bucks an hour, you're going to go to $42 an hour, $41 an hour if they give you the 36. They're, they'll eventually figure it out. Unlike Hollywood, where they're not caving, these guys will eventually have to cave. Let me just get you. Just, uh, you hit the nail on the head with uh, how much money they're making. Um, you know, the biggest... Uh, potentially who can reap the benefits of all this is none other than our friend Elon Musk at Tesla. Why? Because they're not union. You know, you did, you did the whole uh, thing at the CEO meeting of what we're going to do the meetings. Is it union? Is it not union? It was a very interesting dynamic. Um, here's how much the average worker gets paid in each of these companies. Ready? So this is according to the Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC, 
um, Gary Gensler out there. So the average pay for a GM worker, 80 grand a year for GM. The average pay for a Ford worker, 75 grand a year. Uh, Stellantis Chrysler, 68 grand a year. So those are the big three. So you're making between 68 and 80. So I'll call it 70 to 80 grand. Interesting. According to the SEC, you know how much the average Tesla worker makes? How much? Half of that, 34 what? grand. 34 grand. So when you talk, when, and now part of that is because they have uh, factories in China and, and, uh, Elon Musk has been sort of avoiding, you know, unionized and what right to work states. That's a whole nother conversation that him. Tom, that you've done that. But um, this is all part of the government mandated EV agenda, the EV race, what's going on with China, the U.S. You did a whole thing about it, but it's very interesting and it has ramifications way, on your car and the, the politics. By the way, I want to wrap it up with this and got to go to the next story because we're at 24 minutes in and we're at one story. Last thing I'll tell you about, you know, what's the close, you know, what a union leader a mother-in-law, and lawyers have in common. Union leaders, mother-in-law, and lawyers have in common. Let me give you a perspective. Mother-in-law comes in. Wife is there. She's spending time with the mother-in-law. Husband's at work, and she says, you know, I don't know about Larry. He doesn't work as hard as Johnny does. Your sister's husband works very hard, <laughs> and Larry's not a hard worker. And I don't appreciate what Larry does. I think Larry should treat you better. Mm -hmm. That bag you have, the coach, why doesn't he buy you a Louis Vuitton? <laughs> because Johnny does. Oh, and my then, God, I hate this mother-in-law. The, right? the, the wife is sitting there, <laughs> and then the husband comes home. And when the husband comes home, she's like, hey, babe, how you doing? Wow, am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think I was doing? All the cleaning the house, taking care of the kids. What kind of a husband are you? Why can't you give me the person I like want Louis back. Boy, done like Johnny from? does? Yeah. And the husband's like, what are you what talking about, bro? What happened? It's a long-ass day. Yeah. I want to deal with this thing. What are you talking about, babe? He has no clue what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was the union leader, a.k.a. mother-in-law. Now let's talk about another one. Husband and wife are sending up a you know nuptial agreement prenuptial agreement they're about to get married he has to get his lawyer she has to get her lawyers because that's how the code works yeah. you can't get one lawyer to do the nuptial agreement you need one on each side lawyers come in yeah for only three thousand dollars we can get this done it's not even a problem it's only going to cost three thousand dollars then you realize here's the future bride here's the future groom they're about to get married all of a sudden, you realize the lawyers are on the same team. Uh oh. Your lawyer's not on your team. Her lawyer's not on her team. The lawyers are on each other's team. Why? Because here's what they do a wink. Let's start a fight. 22 additional hours times 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. Boom. Smart. I I'm sorry, you got an $11,200 bill. It was supposed to be $3,000, but you know, you fought for those miles and you fought for all this stuff, so it's not 11,000 miles. So, what does union leaders do? Hey, it's not fair. What your boss is doing, <laughs> not fair. That they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. Think about what they're doing. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh my God, God, I have a horrible boss. Yeah. This is such a horrible situation I'm in. Yeah. Boom. All of a sudden, shit. <laughs> the union leader is your mother-in-law. <laughs> That's what's going on with these union leaders. So when you when you think about their job is to divide. Hmm. Okay. You, when you when you think about many of the politicians on the games they're playing, their job is to divide, and then they conquer, and then they come in and say. Hey, hey, Mr. Union Leader, I know you're so worried about us, and I'm having a hard time paying a membership. Pay the membership, but we're going to take care of you because we care about you. Yeah. But as long as you pay the membership and a portion of your side, but we care about you, and as long as, but you got to pay the membership. Can I go get another job? Because I really need to. You can't get another job. But no, you can't get another job because, mm -hmm. you know, we have to be loyal to one another. But I need to go start a show because I'm a talent. And if I don't create comedy, I don't work. What do I do? You got to be loyal to the union. You got to be good to the union. You understand what happens exactly. here? That's what's going on with the union. You know who UAW. they need, by the way? Uh, and we'll wrap up. <coughs> they need the two arbitrators from... The wedding crashers. Wedding they got to get Vince yeah. Vaughn. They got hey, to throw some if miles. If you want to throw some miles this way, <laughs> it's up to you. You shut All your right, mouth when you're talking to me. Go let's, comatose let's for me. Let's go to the next story. There let's go to the next story. All right. A timeline of sexual assault allegations against Russell Brand. Jeez. Here we go. Speaking of principles. Here, here we go. Here we yeah. go. The next one is here. Next target, folks. It's called guilty until proven innocent. Exactly. Modern day. They've, they've evolved. They used yeah. to be innocent until proven guilty. Now it's guilty until proven innocent. Innocent. So where's the story here? It's okay, okay. We go 2006. This is a Guardian story. 2006, a woman alleges that Russell Brand sexually assaulted her during a three-month relationship when she was 16 years old and Brand was 30 years old. Uh, was a BBC radio presenter. She described him as controlling and emotionally abusive. She said he referred to her as the child and advised her to lie to her parents, leading to allegations of grooming. That's 2006. 
in London, okay? 2007, Jordan Martin claims Brand sexually assaulted her and was physically and emotionally abusive during a six-month relationship, she detailed in an incident at a Manchester hotel where Brand became angry and assaulted her. Martin published these allegations in a book in 2014, which Brand has never challenged. 2012, woman alleges that Brand raped her at his Los Angeles home in July of 2012. She claimed he blocked her from leaving and apologized via text message. Afterwards, she received therapy treatment but decided against pursuing legal action. 2013, a woman who met Brand at an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting accuses him of sexually assaulting her at his L.A. home. She claimed he tried to kiss her and remove her clothes. And when she resisted, he shouted at her and later threatened her with legal action if she spoke out. 2020, the woman who alleged sexual assault during her underage relationship with Brand contacted his literary agent who denied the allegations. Brand talent agency, uh, uh, Tavistock, would initially supported him, but later terminated all professional ties with them, stating they were misled. 2023, a joint investigation by the Times, Sunday Times, and Channel 4 dispatches mm -hmm. detailed multiple allegations against Brand. He denied the claims in a video posted online, which got 70 million views, asserting that all his relationships were consensual and accusing the media of coordinated attack. Adam. Yeah, well, where have I seen this playbook before? Huh? Oh. Who have we done some interviews with mm. that you know, made a major name for themselves, was talking about The Matrix, was talking about... Does it rhyme with uh, Brand You Great? It does. Yeah, we. this reminds me eerily... <laughs> Weird. ...of what happened with Andrew Tate. But by the way, this is the playbook, ladies and gentlemen. You know, if you speak against the narrative, if you speak against whether it's Big Pharma or as Alex Jones says, the globalists and the new world, yeah. and the new world order... Yeah, this is what they do, right? So, you know, we'll probably discuss a story about how they tried to assassinate... RFK Jr., yeah. that was the old school playbook. Yeah. Whether it's RFK or Bobby Kennedy or Martin Luther King, they just full on kill you. No. Yeah. Now it's character assassination. We've talked about this a million times on the podcast. But what's interesting about me is all these allegations, allegations, anonymous people, they're from 15 years ago. They didn't want to bring this up 15 years ago. All of a sudden, Russell Brand, I think he's got, like, what, 6 million YouTube subscribers? Which, you just which, you did a show a couple weeks ago, I want to say, right? Was that? Which he's got suspended him, by the way, Adam. He can't make no money right get now. Get out of here. YouTube did YouTube suspend him? This morning. This morning. YouTube. That actually, pss, yeah. yeah. If this can, is what they do, guys. He, he's Go been demonetized. What's up, Rob? There's two things. First of all, at, to Adam's point, these things happened 15 years ago. And let's not forget, in between the 15 years when these accusations happened and today, there was a giant movement in the United States called the Me, the Me Too, Too movement. movement. Where correct. Every, where it was believe all women. Yeah. yeah. And these women failed to come out then. And my favorite is yesterday. Newsweek publishes this story. Jimmy Fallon failed to stop Russell Brand harassing Catherine McPhee. This is yesterday. This is an old video <laughs> from a Tonight Show appearance. Uh, appearance. Same day, Catherine McPhee denies Russell Brand made her feel uncomfortable yeah. on Tonight Show appearance. Yeah. So you have one outlet repeating that it's uncomfortable and making her yeah. feel sexualized. And then another news outlet going, no, there's nothing wrong here. Yeah. And I think it's two major news outlets that have been going after him. It's uh, The Times and then... Uh, Channel 4, both, it's, I think, in, in, in Britain right there. But this is what's happening right now. And at the same time, there's someone going to be watching this. It's like, well, what happens if he did it? What happens if he did it? Okay, prove it. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby, yeah, there are some legitimate scumbags out there. Less movies. But what, Yeah, what we've also learned is that, no, it's not believe all women or don't trust all men. It's a very nuanced individual situation. And Russell Brand who has publicly said, yeah, I, dude, I, I, I was out there. I was a Hollywood movie star. I'm with a bunch of chicks. Thousands of women. Yeah, like Thousands, not you know, like your average when you have, This is my opinion. Come at me. When you have that much access to women and celebrity and fun, you don't need to rape and pillage uh, like you're some dirtbag. And, so, and he doesn't strike me as a type of person who's like, power hungry he speaks truth to power and not and not condoning this or whatever it's just it is what it is mm -hmm. 16 years old pat is the age of consent in england let's just i'm not sticking yeah. up for that that's not my that's By not the my way, bag do you know where it also is uh the age of consent what uh in 35 states <laughs> in america yeah did you know 16, that no I, I thought it was 18 and I over was in 10. every single state because florida and i'm not condoning hanging out with a 16 year old but you know in new york it's actually 16 california it's 18 every state it, 
75 percent in the America, United States of America, pretty 16 crazy. plus. In Florida, Weird. it's a lot of seniors. It's 40. Florida, yeah. 40, 40. 41. But, yeah, yeah but, but, but and Pat, I, I just I think we have a problem, especially when people say. By the way, that's a joke. I don't. Yeah, want that people was to a go joke. Not, Florida's yeah. 40. Uh, Pat, when, you know that's against my rules. The 40 plus crap. I'm Come on, sick player. and tired of hearing innocent until proven guilty because that's in the public eye. You're guilty. And the fact, dude, I saw this me, uh, this newsstand in England. Everything is all going after him. And I don't care what anybody says, Pat. If right now, right now, mm -hmm. on all the magazines, it showed Patrick's face and said, rape accusation. He's a rapist. That's yeah. it. I don't care what you're going to say. And uh, and like you said, Adam, we saw it with Brett Kavanaugh. We saw it with Julian Assange, who's rotting away in a prison because they're telling us the truth. Uh, Andrew Tate said, uh, welcome to the club. He goes, right. they don't like competition. This is what Musk said. Walk out. They don't like he's being targeted by a coordinated media attack for his right-wing criticism. And then Tucker said, criticize the drug companies and question the war in Ukraine. And you can be pretty sure that this is going to happen. And mind you, this documentary... Four, Tom, out of the five women are in the shadows. This revealing, crazy documentary, mm -hmm. which just so happens to be ready to go to make money. And it's like you're sitting in the, in the shadows. It's, it's hard. If you can't see the person's face, it's hard to see their truth. Like, I want to see who's talking. It's like all these uh, anonymous whistleblowers. They're like, no, no, you can't see them. But mm -hmm. trust us, behind this door, there's people saying that you did what you did. I, again... I don't know because I wasn't there. Let it let it all come out. But it's just it's just weird that all this happens once you start speaking the truth. And Pat, I think I mentioned this to you yesterday. You're not really poking the bear unless this happens. He's yeah. saying he's affecting their wallets. He's messing with big pharma, and they just hit one little switch. Boom. That's it. He. He, the they they, love, they loved him a few years ago when he was the liberal uh, playboy. He called Katie oh, Hopkins a Hitler. He called her Hitler. He stormed into her yeah, thing and called her Hitler. He's like, oh, he's so cool. Hey, oh, not the shirt. Yeah. You know, he's just <laughs> take my eyes, yeah, but, but not, not the, the shirt. shirt. Right. But you know, the question becomes: How about this guy named uh, Schofield? Who work for BBC? Oh, yeah. he's oh. dealing with mental issues. <laughs> he's having problems. It's he's, so challenging with all the pressure he's yeah. got to deal. And he with was messing with diddling he's, kids, he's grooming a sixteen-year-old boy. But she, come, so his mom is upset, <laughs> and he's going, "Oh no, no BBC, no. okay, okay." And then you got this Hugh Edwards guy paying. You know, I don't know if you read the story with you. Hugh Edwards, what he's doing. No, but you know, life is challenging for those guys. But God forbid Russell Brand comes out and says what he said. They're going to be targeting the guy again. If he's done what he's done, the lawyers got to do their jobs, but you got to prove. My biggest problem here is the following, is the jump to conclusion society that we're living in right now before anybody is accused of it being right or wrong, immediately, boom, allegations, nope, they're guilty. We did this with politics in 2016 where somebody was, uh, you know, uh, claimed he had been Russia collusion for three years and everybody bought into it. And then we had hmm. believed with Tate what's going on, believed with so many different people. This doesn't mean it can't be true. We just can't jump to conclusion believing everything. But when, they, when a guy like him goes out there and as loud as he is, has been hooking up for as long as he has, all of a sudden he calls out a few people, beautiful yep. target to go. You want to know what's crazy? Why don't you hear these types of allegations come out against someone like Dan Bilzerian, right? Yeah. Or even Leonardo DiCaprio. Does anybody get more ass than those two guys? No. But here's the difference. They stay in their lane. They don't say anything. Very good Leo point. is a huge advocate of uh, animals of <laughs> animals and, and the green uh, energy. Yeah. And that's great. That He's Hollywood. Good for him. So as long as yeah. he doesn't speak out against any narrative. So are you go. saying like Russell should do a video with animals? Uh, he should pet well, like, pet not, like not, a, oh, sec, not a sexual video. He should pet a tiger. But you, you even look at someone like Dan Bilzerian. That guy does two things. Tries to make money and he tries to hook up, you know, yeah. do his thing. But once you start talking about the things that Russell Brand talks about, that Andrew Tate talks about, yeah. but that Alex Jones talks about, whether you, you think it's right or wrong, once you start talking about these things, by the way, the people paying the bills up top, they're going to come at you. You know who wins here? Two companies, X and Rumble. That's who wins here. A thousand percent. Two companies. Right. You, you demonetize this guy, two companies win X and Rumble. Let's yeah. talk about an economy story. Uh, Bobert's lover owns gay friendly Aspen Bar. <laughs> Bobert? Is that, is that what you're calling her? <laughs> Bober, Bober. Is it Lauren Bobert? Is it Bobert? Bo She's can French. I, can I She's... pronounce the way I pronounce yeah, these I words or do I have it. to do it like no, go your head. Bo you know, of all the words you yeah. pronounced, uh, first of all, yours and I'm in. Is, this the, is great. this the story of her going to it or isn't this the story that I'm yeah. telling? Yeah, so they go to yeah, this. Believe all women before you even say this story. So Lauren. She would never lie. Lauren Bobert. Yes. A Republican. 
Republican <laughs> representative is romantically involved with Quinn Gallagher, the co-owner of Hooch Craft Cocktail Bar in Aspen, known for hosting Hooch. drag shows. Bobert, previously critical of uh, drag, was captured engaging in public affection with Gallagher, who profits from drag performances. She comments on drag, including uh, include tweets like, take your children to church, not to drag bars. Video footage from a theater outing in Denver showed Quinn Gallagher fun fondling Lauren's uh, uh, breast, which ignited controversy. <laughs> Initially denying the claims, she later attributed her behavior to her public and difficult divorce and issued an apology saying the past few days have been very difficult and humbling and I'm truly sorry. The incident at the theater involved disruptive behavior, behavior vaping and recording the show leading to police involve, involvement. First of all, I don't yeah. know if you know this or not. Speaking of her, she's single as of this morning. She broke up with that no that guy. So Lord, yeah. if you're what, what, yeah. is this that's look at look at this. First of all, she dude, what, what a fun are, girl. They're getting handy. What is what's happening? Girl. Listen, but got, mind you though, this is and by the in way, the this dark. is in the dark. This is, is he rubbing her tits? Yeah, she's grabbing his crotch. But listen, no, straight up, is that actually what's that's happening? That's real, Adam. That's real. Is this your wow. first time seeing it? That's your first time. I saw her vaping. I didn't no. realize there was some great. But, but here's going the thing, on. hey Lauren, if you're listening, I'm on the market and I'm a big fan of your politics but listen so i just find it funny that this whole ordeal pat and like we just saw it it's recorded on multiple night vision cameras cnn they contact cnn immediately all right it's a big big story but you know what when it comes to the west wing outside the situation room they find a big bag of booger sugar guess what no cameras. <laughs> Nobody knows what's going. On. Nobody knows what's going on. A so theater has better camera equipment than the White House. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. They yeah. had nine common sense, they and they've got uh, they've got uh, infrared, so you can see people at night and everything yeah. like this. And it's, not the White House, though. Yeah, no, they're the those House, old blurry cameras. Anytime it's the White House or like Epstein's prison cell, there's no like, they weren't working that day or, or nothing worked. I thought about it. If she ha she should have brought Hunter Biden. With her, that this wouldn't have been, you never would have seen anything. <laughs> None of this would have been seen. What an back. idea! But she's by you. I'm not gonna let's just be honest. She just got divorced. I think she has four or five kids. Rob, say what really? you want. She's a little haughty and she has fun. She's vaping, grabbing boobs. I'm that. Listen, Lauren, I'm single, so I'm gonna message no, her on Vinny, Instagram. Hang, hang on a second. I love her. She's fun. What, I are, love the, what are the chances that Hunter Biden's in her DMs? He's probably in there right now. He's probably what in there are right the chances now. saying? You, that guy doesn't know how to party like I do. Yeah. You're my kind. Let's go do something together. Yeah, and guess what? There'd Dump be no the cameras. amateur. Dump the amateur. Yeah. I'm right here. What do you, Tom, what do you think about this? Honestly, what do you think about this? So, all the jokes aside. So all the jokes aside, I think there's another side to this. And that is she knows that she is riding the third rail. And for those of you that don't know the um, subway, that's one with the electricity, the dangerous one. She's right next to the third rail every time she makes a speech in Washington because she is, number one, was anti-establishment. Number two, was conservative. And number she's three— She's riding the third rail. She's like an inch There's from the third There's a third rail. guy involved. <laughs> she was an inch away from Hunter. him. Maybe. Hunter. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Listen, for I Middle Eastern, what there, is a third rail? I'll break it down the to third, my friends. The third, like rail third is like guy. Who's someone, the third guy? If someone falls off yeah. a subway stand, yeah. you got to reach down and you scream at them, don't touch the third rail. It's one in the middle where so the So she shouldn't have touched it. Should and, not have touched it. Yeah. Touched it and so what this is, <laughs> is you're a congresswoman. You got to know with your background and what you stand for that they are looking for you to to trip and to do anything and to not say thank you when you hold the does door this open. Hurt, does this, <laughs> honestly, so, does this hurt her political career? One yes, million does. percent. I, I, Pat, I, this I, is I, not helping you. I guess it, what, it does. I this is not good. I if I was if I was on her team, you know, I, I would be saying, Lauren, what are you doing? They're looking for you, you in know, every moment. Can I play you the just, devil's advocate? You just gave them three things. I know you want to go out and have a good time, and you're getting divorced as a new boyfriend. I get it, Lauren. But you don't have to to, to put I'm, yourself in a position where you're giving them ammunition. Pat, you, you want to be right the now. third rail now? Go, go ahead. What's no, no, your, go what? ahead. What's your, what's uh, well, so you say this hurts her career. Why? How is any of this helpful? She's, she's number one, full-on lying. 1,000 okay. votes. Okay. That okay. was the last but, election. That's, but that's, a, that's politics, though. No, I, I'm politics aside. We'll By get the way, to that Rob second. keeps playing this. Rob, yeah. are you playing this for us or for yourself? Like, <laughs> Rob, show us your hands, hands buddy. Rob, Rob, show us your hands. Hands, he, he, Rob, he, he, hands where I can see Rob, them. Put your right. pants on. Adam, what the hell are you doing? Ahead, so, he, you, you know, that takes oh, me on replay. Hang on, we'll give up. Show us your hands, Put your pants on, dude. We're going to give Rob a moment for himself. We'll go good, bad, ugly here. So, for, like in terms of rap? politics, yeah, she's probably one of the more attractive 
congresswomen. Okay. At the same time, Vinny, she's also 36 with four kids. She's 36. I'm 45. Stay I'm away. messaging her right now, Pat. Huge fan. Vinny, I'm not joking. You're not ready to be a stepdad. I'm not joking. Whatever. I'm messaging her right but now. But she's in, she's in Colorado, which has gone from red to purple to full on blue these days. She's in a red district. That's the Denver. only reason she's got elected. But this doesn't help her. So um, she was asked, number one, this happened at the Beetlejuice situation. If Love you've never it. seen the movie the Beetlejuice. It was a musical. Yeah, the, the musical, the reenactment. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, yeah. Beetlejuice. That's great how great movie, Michael Keaton, amazing. Yeah. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. But she was accused of vaping. The, some lady behind her was apparently pregnant, was like, hey, can you stop vaping? She's like, yeah, I'll do what I want to do, whatever. Allegedly, she was like, no, I wasn't vaping. Uh, she's like, it was the fog machines. It's like, no, clearly <laughs> yeah. you're vaping. Yeah. You lied. Yeah. We caught you in a lie. Not a good look. And we all know politicians lie, but this is on camera. But then she um, she was asked to leave for whatever. She was taking selfies in the middle of the night. Uh, she they, they basically they kicked her out. And she gave the classic, don't you know who I am thing? And they go, no, we know exactly who you are. Yep. Representative Bo Bear, Bobert. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we, you get the hell out of here. She flicked up the middle finger. It's drama. But this isn't good, a good look. But look, if it you're a public figure, you obviously have the uh, entitled to your private life. I get it. But when you're giving handies vaping, getting your titties rubbed at a public venue. In the dark. It's pitch black. Uh, she doesn't think people are recording her and then they're calling CNN. So you're saying that she should be doing that because it's dark? No, no. What I'm saying she is... She shouldn't the, be doing that. No, what I'm saying is... Okay, this, I, oh. I get the vaping triggered them to watch, but dude, multiple cameras. It's, it's not like... By the way, we're watching it. Like Pat said, this is in night vision. Nobody is seeing it. I, I understand yeah, the you know, you know who has night vision cameras? Every theater, because it's always at dark. Except the White House. Except right. the White House. Except, Except the White House. The White House. Okay. Adam, but Adam, here's the thing. Well played, guys. She's, she's going to get fa fans. The younger crowd, the younger guys are definitely going to be fans. And guess what? They're going to be they're gonna be trying to slide in her DMs. I, and, I uh, just uh, messaged yeah. her. No. But here's the thing. <laughs> and Adam, I'm dead serious. And even if it doesn't work out, you know what the beauty about today in this culture is? She could go to OnlyFans and she would make a killing after this. That is 100. probably what her future That's, is. That's well, God bless you. Probably think not so. wrong. But wait a minute, but you, you think bring so. it up. If she gets you out of politics, you think she's done done. I don't well I don't when is she up for re election? I don't uh, she, she's a representative, so it's every two the, years. Colorado, Colorado, so, Colorado, yeah. Mate, you're right. She coming is, up for re election. She is probably. absolutely a pubic figure. A, a Pub public <laughs> public figure. <laughs> and um, sixty two year old child over here. <laughs> I love it. And um she won the last election by less than a thousand votes. Yeah. So it's she's not like it's not like she's Teddy Kennedy in Boston, yeah. and you're going to get eighty two percent of the vote exactly. every time. Pat, can, there is a lot going on here. Pat, can you tell Rob to put his pants on? Like it's yeah. gotten to the point where now I came and looked at well, the computer. We all know that. I think what's the percentage of political ads that <laughs> are negative? Won, she like, won by more than twenty six thousand five hundred votes. Oh, that nearly retained her seat against the Democrat Republican legislature. And narrowly retained her seat against fewer the Democrat than challenger total by fewer than six hundred total. Oh wow. I that, think she's in a game. That was votes. the election, Pat. So that she, was the re-election. Wow. Point so is, that, it's that's, a close that's race. That's a mess. And we that's all know that I think 75% yeah. of political ads are negative. Look what Donald Trump did. Yeah. Joe Biden's falling apart. Like, it's all negative. Dude, you know. I love You her. spent a million bucks on ads showing her giving a handy during Beetlejuice. It wasn't she's a done. handy. It was a rubby. Whatever on, it was. Adam. It wasn't It's not bad. a good look. It's unbecoming. Of office, um, I just right? Met, but I messaged her and I'm yeah. wait for her. She's response. like, what's up? You up? <laughs> anyway, this is... Oh uh, I'm a fan, Lauren. But listen, <sighs> Lauren, I'm a fan. even though she lied about this, clearly, you got to believe all women. You, you're damn right. Okay. All right. Next story. Next story we go here. What is a woman? Uh, what do you want to go to next? You want to go to AOC or you want to go to... No, let's do Zelensky. Guys, Zelensky... <laughs> Went and met up with his private equity camp to raise the money. He's coming in to collect his He's money coming. from the PE firm. It's not BlackRock. It's not uh, State Street. It's not Vanguard. It's called the White House. Nice. Zelensky to meet U.S. senators with Ukraine aid under threat. So, in other words, he's coming to say, you haven't paid your debt. Wow. What are we waiting for? Ukrainian president uh, Zelensky is set to meet with the top U.S. Senate leaders, including Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell, during his visit to Washington. The meeting is aimed to securing renewed commitments from the U.S. to assist Ukraine in its effort to regain territory occupied by Russia. The meeting in Congress comes uh, as uh, House Republicans are preparing to block a Biden administration request for an additional $24 billion in Ukraine aid with a deadline of September 30th for the end of the fiscal year. Conservative hardliners in the House have threatened a government shutdown if the budget deal includes more aid to Ukraine. Zelensky has been vocal about Ukraine's need 
for additional weaponry, emphasizing the importance of modern system and rest, rest, uh, restoring the country's territorial integrity. So he's coming, in other words, to say, I need more money, pay up if you don't. You know, this is going to hurt you because your people are going to have to come and fight and your kids are going to come and have to fight. And he's going to use the guilt tactic to get people to want to pay the money to it. So, Tom, what do you think is going to end up happening here with uh, this Zelensky visit? Well, there's two things that are coming together, and you mentioned one of them. We have another debt deal. It, that's right. Just that quick, we have another debt deal. And they made – and Zelensky's um, – you know, I, I think there's nefarious things going on here. You know, you, you just send money, not arms. Why don't you just send – Money that's been turned into weapons. I mean, but instead we're sending all the all this aid, and it sure doesn't look like it's getting to the people. Uh, I think number one, this is this is exactly what Kevin McCarthy needed. Um, one of the things because he's got to get the debt deal on. By the way, the U.S. just crossed, like uh -oh. in the last week, thirty-three trillion mm -hmm. in debt. So we yes. went thirty-three, and mm -hmm. since our great legislators. Our congressmen representing us, since the debt ceiling crisis and the deal they made, they've managed to keep that credit card down to one trillion per month. And over the last five years, they've added 11.5 trillion. So 33 percent of the of the 33 trillion have been added in just the last five years since they made a debt deal for the rest of us. And I think the newer debt deals, they just they got to have some leverage. And all this is is Kevin McCarthy saying, "I'm going to get what I want in there, and this isn't necessarily going to bring the debt down. I'm going to get what I want in there." Zelensky is going to get some of this. The Biden administration is going to make sure he gets some of this, but it means McCarthy is also going to get stuff that that his side wants. And once again, the can gets kicked down the road on the American but, taxpayer. But like, but, but like, is it just, is it ridiculous? Like, we've created a monster. The guy, is, his country's in war right now, right? He's flying here because we said, hey, we're going to give you money. The guy's flying here to be like this. Hey, listen, I know you said you were giving me this gift. Where the hell is it? Do you understand, like, where we've gotten to, in, in our country, Tom? We're a president of a different country that we said, yeah, we're going to give you money at some point. But one side is saying, nah, we can't afford it right now. You're getting on a plane to come here to be like, yo, yo, yo. Can't stand that. Pat, is that, and not just, by the I way. Can't, you, know, you know what it is? It's kind of like when you have money and you go to a restaurant with your friends and everybody expects you to get the bill. Exactly. It's like when you're, you go out with your family members, the family members come to you and say, you have the money, why don't you pay for it? It's like three siblings. The sister makes the most money. She's an executive. She got a degree, MBA. She makes 280 a year. The other two siblings, younger brothers, they're not really workers. One makes 120, one makes 60. They say, hey, sister, since you're the CEO of XYZ company, you make all the money. Mom just died. You paid for the funeral costs. You have all the money. We don't. It's an entitled attitude to come and demand money. It's as if he has something on somebody in the White House to say, you better pay up or else. It's Weird. as if, not as, as him, if. It's it sounds purely like it as be. if. So, there's a part of it that makes me feel very uncomfortable. Go ahead. Let me give a little perspective here because, um, by the way, when do you think this is going to come to a head? Well, he's coming next week. No, no, like this entire situation. With? With Ukraine. January of 2025 if there's Correct. a president. Correct. Uh, this is not getting resolved in the next three, six months. This is going to be, you know, we talk about the culture wars that's going on in America, right? That's going to be hot button issues during the election. Abortion. LGBT, trans, everything, critical race. That, this is actual wars, right? And the American people are going to have a vote because you're going to assume that Biden is going to double down on this, obviously, if he makes it to the debate stage. Of This is why we need to be here. This is what we got to protect NATO. We got to protect democracies. You can't just invade countries. There's going to be a narrative, no doubt. And then Trump, I'm assuming, is going to say, I could fix this in one day. There would be no war without me. Putin's my guy. Like, you know, he's going to give, obviously, a completely different narrative. And the American people, rightfully so, are going to have the ability to decide, do you want to keep giving money to Ukraine or not? But it's not just money. It's three things. Because actually, Rob, shout out to you. You did some research. This is actually as of this summer, so it might be a couple of months old. But the United States, by far and away, has given the most to Ukraine. You talk about the big three, big three auto. Here are the big three ways that um, countries, not just the United States, have donated um, money. Invested. Uh, yeah. Exactly, invested. Yeah. So it's, it's military, financial, and humanitarian. So 60% uh, of the United States have done has been military aid, 30% uh, financial, and 10% 
humanitarian. But it, listen, it's, as much as it is a White House issue, it's not like the United States is just funding this alone. Combined, the EU, UK, Germany, Japan, Canada, Poland, Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, France, Italy, Finland, Czech Republic, Austria, Spain, Slovakia, South Korea, Lithuania, and Belgium have all given massive amounts of money, whether it's in military, financial, or humanitarian. So this is not a, just a U.S. thing, but it should be for us. But it's also the EU and everyone across the globe EU that's should, fighting EU should give Putin. The most. EU should give the most. They're not. Why should we give the most? Well, I think, as we all know with NATO, it's a percentage of GDP. The reason that we, we have get, the I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. We, we have the second highest percentage that we give. And at the same time, America's got a bunch of shit that we're dealing with. We have to make that a priority. No, we're not. giving we're giving this guy stage time to come to us and say I need more money. What, what do you mean we're giving you more stage time to come and beg for more money? How much more money do you need to give? What else do you want us to send to you? While our military gets weaker, yep. while we have planes that are flying around where the pilot is ejected and uh, we're getting a message saying, by the way, if you guys find any debris, just let us know because we can't find it. We're the greatest military in the world. Here's what we are. Come to us. Well, there's a top we, secret plane a, in your backyard. Don't touch it. Call this number. Yeah, unbelievable. Right? It's like, hey, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're definitely showing the world how strong we are with what we got going on. But, hey, if you don't give me more money, where is your humanitarian? We're going through such struggles in Ukraine. Is what We need more money. Okay. All right. Little bit, yes. A lot of money. We've given you mm -hmm. plenty. How many? How much more do we need to give? I kind of like the fact they're trying to hold back a little bit on the amount of money they want to give, and uh, you know, uh, uh, support's been given plenty for you to keep coming and then using like your, you know, all these other tactics. I'm just not mm -hmm. a fan of a guy I, what he's doing. I know we need to move on, yeah. um, but look. I, for me, it's not zero or a hundred, okay? Like Candace Owens, I, I I love that conversation that we had with Candace last Thursday. It was amazing. She's like zero, nothing, zilch, f not them. happening. F them. Like f them whatsoever. Then it's like, what's the slippery slope with that? If China invades Taiwan, we do nothing. You know, God forbid, there's another world where we do nothing. Are we non-interventionist? Are we completely libertarian that approach, or are we policing the world, involved with everybody? 850 bases around the world. 780. Like 780. 780. Okay, so like which one is it? There needs to be some nuance here. And at the end of the day, the American people, the American people, yeah. American people are going to make this decision. Or do you want to be more involved? Do you want to be less involved? Let's go to the next but story. We can't just no have a blank let's check for this no like more. Afghanistan. Let's, let's go to the next story. Man arrested in suspected assassination attempt at RFK Jr. event. Uh, posing, if you can play this video, Rob, so people can see it while I'm reading this, it'd be great. RFK demanded Secret Service protection from President Biden after an armed gunman posing as security team members was arrested at an event just two miles from the site of his father's assassination in 1960. Uh, it says uh, a father's assassination 60. in 1968. The armed suspect carrying loaded pistols and a U.S. Marshal badge attempted to approach RFK during a Hispanic Heritage Month event in L.A., Quick thinking security personnel from Gavin De Becker and Associates, GDBA, detained the man until LAPD arrived to make the arrest. RFK Jr., who is a long shot for the 2024 uh, Democratic nomination, expressed frustration with the White House for denying his earlier request for Secret Service protection, saying, I'm the first presidential candidate in history to whom the White House has denied a request for protection. Uh, Vinny, what else you got on this story? Well, well, first of all, Pat, what a weird, what a weirdo as, as a law enforcement. Anybody that out there that's law enforcement, Pat, I'm pretty sure you know this. Why, why aren't you disarming the guy? He has two guns under his armpits. Okay, they're not taking away his guns. They're not. He, he's posing as a U.S. marshal. Is that him right there? That's him right there, bro. And what he was dressed as what a U.S. marshal. Like, as a U.S. marshal. And it boggles my mind. Oh that, shit! Look at him. he's got the whole badge. And he, it, oh yeah. But oh, he it, just. Oh no, hundred percent. He went for it. And here's my thing: wow. How is this not a huge story, or or even bigger? Because say what you want, Adam. This is an assassin. There, why is this guy trying to get close to him? I had I had people from Cali that are like, "How do you know he was just you know not trying to get close to?" I go, "Protect what? He is has two guns. You know what his motive is, okay? And that's one thing. The second thing, uh, not only was his uncle." murdered, assassinated, and we're finding out what the CIA had involvement. His father was two miles away, and it's like the guy's begging. RFK's begging. He goes, I'm still entertaining the hope 
that Joe Biden, they'll give me Secret Service protection. And uh, just, just a little fun fact I'll give you guys. Normally, the agency protects major candidates for president and vice president within 120 days of the election. Ironically, these measures were put in place after they killed Robert Kennedy. Obama was the first presidential candidate in history to receive Secret Service protection almost two years prior. Two years he had had it. The fact that they're denying it, Adam Wood, that to me, the average person that says, what, you don't, you just don't care? And I, Pat, I sent this clip to Rob of uh, JFK going into his motorcade right before he was assassinated. There's two Secret Service guys, the main detail guys, Pat, they're in the back. The agent in charge, Amory Roberts, waves off two of the most important bodyguards, and, and he's obviously confused about it. Yeah, Rob, you could fast forward just a touch. Like, you could tell, Pat, that this guy, Adam, was not in on the don't run next to the, the motorcade. Look at this. You can put the volume up. Look at this guy. This guy. Normal. Look. That is up until this instant. He's supposed to what run to protect the back. So Look. Going to he's like, what? Four more times. Yeah, let him play one more time. Like, he's like, wait a minute. And now he's going to go and he gets assassinated. Those two guys are important to block bullets coming from the back. He stopped running. Yeah, yeah watch, oh, Adam. Jesus. And watch this. Check this out. Emory Roberts is coming. The Secret Service follow-up. They have no clue what's about to happen. With his hand, what he is doing is calling away the president's two most important bodyguards. Look, the bodyguards whose job was to protect the president's back by riding yeah. the bumper of the limousine. Look at that. Out the he just like, he's like, wait, wait, what? And then look at him. And then he's going to his death. So, so, and my point being, Pat, in this day and age, this is R.F. Kennedy. Like, he has a history. His family has been assassinated, and you're you're denying him Secret Service what, protection. What was the 120 days thing that you said? So, uh, uh, no, a, the agency, the Secret Service, protects major candidates for president and vice president. Pre. He's a major pre 120 days within election time. But, gotcha. but so Obama got it two, two years, prior. years prior because it's Obama. They yeah. can't. They got to protect him. To, to re-election. No, 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 no. no. To election first to, one. One first point one, out. which is odd. So in 2007, 2008, when he ran, he started getting Secret Service in 2005, Wait, six, six before 2006. He had, he had what? Two years prior. So he was at, he basically he was anointed. He's a, he, ex exactly, but. My, my thing, my my only thing is, if you're not protecting the guy after the history of his family with assassination and murder with government involvement, yeah. it's kind of shady business you're, to me. You're absolutely right, and God forbid <laughs> anything would happen to RFK Jr. Uh, this would be blood would be on Biden administration's Do you, hands. Okay, you think I'm so? just well, of course. I mean, look, this is the only other candidate that is challenging joe biden and it's not even close obviously if joe biden you know makes it to the state re-election yeah. that he's the guy you know he's not doing any debates uh, rfk is he's out there but he's i, I don't know is he polling at 17 percent, 20 percent? biden's at it's like a trump biden uh collision course we know that but you know one of the more one of the more famous speeches that i remember from rfk recently was when he was talking about gun violence in America and basically framing it as far as a uh, opioid drug mental health situation. And he's like, look, I've lost two family members <laughs> to gun violence. And it makes you think you're like, all right, who were the two family members? Well, my dad, <laughs> uh, Bobby Kennedy and my uncle, JFK. Yeah. So if there's anybody that understands gun violence and assassinations, it would be this guy. Yeah. Uh, JFK at the time of his death was 46. RFK was 42. JFK Jr. Uh, was 38. He died in a plane crash. RFK 69. So um, he's beaten the odds, and let's Thank make God. sure that he's at least protected. Yep. Okay. Next story. Americans are least likely to care about kids having good manners. Here's what they prioritize instead. This is, again, a CNBC story. Uh, uh, in 2017, only 52% of adults in the U.S. considered good manners as an important quality for children, a significant drop from 1990 when it was 76%. Rob, can you pull up this article? From 76% to 52%, according to a report by King's College London, this makes the U.S. the least likely country among 24 surveyed to prioritize good manners in contrast, Egypt leads with 96%, considering good manners crucial, followed by Nigeria, 
Obedience is less valued in the U.S., with only 21% seeing it as important for kids. Nigeria tops the list at 58%. The report highlights that the importance of uh, obedience has declined in the Western countries since 90s, with the U.S. dropping from 39 to 21%. Besides good manners and obedience, the U.S. value war- hard work, 68%, independence, 56%. Imagination, 30%. Religious faith, 32% amongst children. However, tolerance and respect for others, 71%, are most commonly considered important, though the U.S. ranks 11th in this category. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? You can see it every day. Uh, the BizDoc Babe is a teacher, and we see it all the time. We've entered an era where it seems to be more important that your kids are happy and satiated. Right? Keep them happy. Oh, why isn't he happy? And you see the stories of parents at the you know, bribing a kid with ice cream to keep him from having the tantrum. You've seen it on airplanes. We've seen it in malls. And over the last 20 years, this new generation, it's about being happy and satiated. And it's because the parents are not worried about the manners and discipline. They're worried about keeping their kid happy. They're worried about satiating him. There's a word for this. It's called spoiled. The discipline that comes with it Kids that have rails, it's a fact that they are content, and there's a word for this, disciplined. They are, they are content, and they're disciplined. They know their rails, and they have happy little lives from that side of it. When parents don't care about their kids, and, and you see the drop in what we think about good manners, they're not worried about the manners. They're worried about just keeping the kid quiet and bribing them and and they're spoiling kids, they're not building good citizens. And when you look at this list of things, it's exactly flipped from, you know, from the 80s. You know, I I wasn't allowed to do tantrums, and my mom was not, you know, some horrible person. I was not permitted to do that. And by the way, if I threw a tantrum, somebody else's mom, oh, wait, I'll I'll tell you something. This is great. So I am six years old. I have now just started first grade, and we're in St. Louis, Missouri, a little town called Creevecore, and I take, like, two of my little comic books and I put them in this bag and I'm walking down the street and I'm like nine houses from where I live. This guy comes around the corner and I don't even remember the last name, but he rolls down the window and he says, Tommy, where are you going? And he says, I'm mad. I'm running away. He stops his car, gets out and stands up and says, go home. Cause he knew where I lived <laughs> and he just yelled and pointed down the street. He didn't spank me. He didn't do anything like that, but he, he exerted parental authority. You know what I did? I turned around and walked back home. <laughs> and as I'm turning around, he says, I'm calling your mom. She'll be ready when you're there. And so he's going to his house to call my mom. And so I didn't turn out terrible. But the point is now people are worried about, oh, you know, you don't worry about manners. You worry about, oh, does he want to be a boy? Want to be a girl? Oh, the little boy wants to be a girl. Give me the dick saw. Here we go. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Well, he's dick saw. Yeah. I I don't know what the name for the medical tool is. I just made that up. I just think it says a lot. That's what they use in Missouri. (laughs) Dick saw. I think it says a lot about Tom that even at that age, he's running away and he's like, I'm bringing reading and (laughs) Tom's like, I'm, you know what? The hell with the underwear and shit. I'm bringing comic books. I I, 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 I really, I know, brilliant. I really wanted to have this conversation. I really wanted to hit this topic because I think it's sort of indicative of where we're at in society. As great as America is, everything that we've done in our economy and the world and innovation and GDP and capitalism and free markets, you know, uh, we, we are the envy of the world. Nobody's trying to come to any other country other than America as the American dream. We talk about immigration, which is a, sh- a shit show these days. But everyone wants to come to America. But when you get to America, you realize there's something kind of going on here that ain't right these days. Okay? And a lot of it has sort of been influenced by the su- by sort of what's going on in social media for sure, which has been good and bad for some reasons. You know, part of the uh, – one of the big things that I talk about on my show all the time is this Wall Street Journal we've talked about here is that the, uh, the, the Americans pulling back from – the values that once defined us. So there's been, you know, patriotism is immensely on the decline. Having children is immensely on the decline and raising children, obviously that's a whole nother conversation. Religion's on the decline, community involvement's on on the decline, but what's up is money and looking out for yourself and selfishness and taking selfies for that matter. So what, what I love about America is personal responsibility and what we call rugged individualism, but also, and I don't necessarily believe in the collectivism, uh, socialism, but there is some sort of collective collectivism of 
you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And I think what we need to bring back in America are ass whoopings. Because I agree 100%. It, it, it's so easy for any kid to go online and just talk shit with zero accountability. Did you see the latest interview that Tate did with the Aiden Ross kid and the kid that he brought on with him? Did yeah, you see this? That dork. Okay, that freaking dork in a SpongeBob outfit. He's so 15 dumb. years old talking shit yep. to Andrew Tate being like, I'll fucking kick your ass, bro. And Tate, like a G, is like, oh, really, bro? Uh, is that a SpongeBob shirt you're wearing? <laughs> As he's literally hitting his inhaler yeah, to breathe. So he's funny. like, yeah, I know how it is to breathe air these days. It, but the, the reality is this. Because of social media, you have these kids that blow up online that have never have to leave their house, face zero consequences, can talk shit online all day, as Drake says, uh, trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. You can act tough. And this kid right here, can we punch it on this dork. kid in the green shirt? He, yeah, Look at up. this freaking dork just talking <laughs> what an, shit what an alpha. to Tate. Look at what this kid. Alpha. What an alpha. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll come over there and kick your ass. Yeah. Really, bro? Yeah. Okay? I, mean, I, think that's just for, I think that's for eyeballs, though. I don't think but that's, that's my point. Is that that kid is an influencer? He's like, is that a so a what's kid like point? that? So what's your so point? my point so like that what? is a kid like that yeah. in the real world yeah. when we were growing up yeah. in the eighties. If he talks shit like that in public to an yeah. Andrew Tate, he wouldn't be so walking right bring now. Back ass I'm saying what bring back ass whoopings. And and, and and just and, and Pat, I think the reason I, don't, I know Adam's not. No people are gonna be like, oh, Adam's saying beat your kids. No, no. As all of us did, no, I'm, there was, I'm there, was <laughs> there was consequences to your actions. Like Pat, if, you're, if our parents yeah. let you, don't 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 touch this, and you went when you, once you got that, you learned. It's almost like the Pavlov dog theory. You knew not to do that. It wasn't like I was bleeding or there was no fear. So now those kids, once now they realize, oh, they're not gonna. I could touch this and nothing's gonna happen. That's where you have kids now because the parents are disarmed. The parents they call the cops. On, on their parents now. Now a kid goes from, I could touch this, I could stay, I could do what I want. You know what? Mm -hmm. In school, they're telling me I could be a girl. I'm a girl. And the parent's like, okay, okay, John, there's no discipline. And you're right, Adam. I think they should, that we should have a national yeah. whoop your kid's ass day I, I, we're just not to let that. them know. I, I want to get obviously get Pat's opinion as a parent. Let me just say one thing, disclaimer. I don't have kids. Uh, all my best friends have kids. I hang out with them every weekend. I'm around all these kids. I was a teacher for two years. I taught second grade. I taught seventh grade. Okay, I was a camp counselor. I've been around kids. And um, it, it, something is going on, especially because of social media. And bring, make America great again. Make ass whoopings a great again. I love it. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a standard issue, and I think parents are scared of their kids, and it makes no sense for me for parents to be scared of kids instead of kids being scared of parents. It's extremely confusing to see something like that taking place, but that makes sense that that has happened in America. That's catastrophic for some people that have kids. It's not a, a, a good sign here. 7,000 people arrive on Italian island of 6,000 as migrant crisis overwhelms Lampedusa. Okay, this is a CNN story. This is in Italy. Um, uh, Lampedusa, an Italian island of fewer than 7,000 residents, is grappling with an overwhelming migrant influx with 7,000 arrivals in two days, leading Mayor Filippo Manino to state, now we have reached a point of no return where the role played by this small rock in the middle of the Mediterranean has been put into crisis by the dramatic nature of this phenomenon, the UN refugee agency, Chiara Cardoletti, emphasized the gravity of the situation, describing it as critical and stressing the need to urgently relocate people off the island. Authorities have already transferred around 5,000 individuals from Lampedusa to the Italian mainland in the past 28 hours. The sur surge in arrivals, many of whom are escaping political instability in Tunisia, are alarmed, have alarmed officials. Tom. Look, this is... This is basically, you know what this is? This is like the UN just run amok. And by the way, they didn't say revolution in Tunisia. They didn't say genocide in Tunisia. They didn't say, you know, that there is a flood and now there's no housing and no working power plants in Tunisia. No, it's political instability in Tunisia. So, okay, so you know what? Your place over there really sucks, so we're just going to let you move lock, stock, and barrel over here. We're going to take you to Italy and some... 
Einstein thought it was a good idea just to drop them on an island where basically everybody gets to keep track of one immigrant. You know, uh, everybody, everybody, 7,000 of you, okay, buddy system, pair up with a, a refugee, and this is how we're going to do this. And this is this is horrible. This is this is the same thing. By the way, no one in Europe wants to learn from experience. Do you see the issues that that Germany is having right now when they had those boatloads of immigrants that came into Germany? Remember yeah. two years ago? Yeah. It went on for four months. They just kept bringing boatloads, boatloads. And in the middle of those boatloads, they have found criminals that have found thriving criminal careers in Germany. And they found a lot of people that wanted to make it to Germany and make a new life and find something and get away from something else. I, I just think... When the when the, the UN is if you don't think there's one world government coming, you know, this is the this is the UN here, you know, basically green lighting and then the EU EU, which has tremendous power over the borders, which is the reason for Brexit, which is the reason the UK says, Leave me alone, I'm gonna do it my way, my rules. This is this is horrible. This is this is unchecked. And they and they actually don't care. I think they're actually trying to to you know, crush structure and and head for the Great Reset. Let me give you a little perspective here. You know, um, I get it. People want to leave for a better life, safety, security, future of your children. I get it. Um, we just talked about, you know, stop donating money to Ukraine and stop, you know, policing the world. Uh, as an American, the last thing on my list is Lampedusa, Italy, and the migrant crisis. <laughs> I don't give two shits. Okay, because especially, and my Democratic friends out there, you might get a little triggered right now, especially with what's going on in the border right now in America, yep. in Mexico, which is a shit show. And when you have someone like Fareed Zakaria, who I was probably my favorite journalist out there, who I respect, basically, and he's a CNN guy, he's like, yeah, the Democrats have it all wrong. This is a shit show. If you see what's going on in New York and the sanctuary cities and Eric Adams talking about the decline in New York City— Whatever is happening in the U.S. border right now is not good. And you got to credit Donald Trump for bringing this up. The problem that the media basically utilized was they, they called him a racist and Mexicans are rapists and all this kind of stuff. But no, let's just look at the actual issue. Our actual border here in the United States of America is a shit show. And you, you could say the Democrats want to have it. So they can open borders, so they can have, you know, we remember that under the Biden administration, we came in here and that's how you got in America and that's how you're going to be able to vote. Okay, that's a long-term play and everything that's going on with the dreamers and the anchor babies and voting, future voting. At the end of the day, my point is this, Italy, Lampedusa, EU, figure it the fuck out. We have to figure our own shit out over here. Watch this here. During this entire time, newborn baby found dead on migrant boat off Lampedusa as Italy wrestles with surge and rivals. Another kid died. Uh, uh, that, the, right at the top. Let me read the next part there at the top. Keep going up. The baby's death comes days after a five-month-old boy drowned when a boat carrying migrants from North Africa capsized. I mean, there's it's horrible. It's horrible. Nonstop stories. But then who's paying the price for it? The 6,000 people living on that island. It's, it's not even their island what anymore, the, Pat. There's more of the other people than there are yeah. of you. It's not what, yours what, anymore. What did they do? What, what, what are they at fault? There's simple people on an island trying to make their lives work in a boom. Because you're part of this, you have to take it. And by the way, you heard what Erdogan said about EU? No. That he's considering what, leaving the EU, Erdogan, yes, from Turkey? The Turkey president says, yeah. says, you know what? We may be out of here. So let me read this. Erdogan says Turkey may be part ways with, uh, with the EU. He implied the country could end its membership bid and uh, uh, could end its membership bid. President uh, uh, Erdogan said Saturday that Turkey may part ways with the European Union, implying that the country is thinking about ending its bid to join the 27-nation bloc. The EU is making efforts to sever ties with Turkey. We will evaluate the situation, and if needed, we will part ways with the EU. He was responding to a question about a recent report adopted by the European Parliament, which stated the accession process cannot resume under the current circumstances and calls on EU to explore a parallel and realistic framework for EU-Turkey relations. Turkey applied to join the EU in 1999. The accession talks began in 2005, and the accession negotiations were, uh, were frozen in 2018 because of democratic backsliding, according to the e to the European Parliament. H how bad is this for EU? Is EU sitting there saying, we don't mind losing Turkey? Or, uh, you know, what do, what do you see when you see this here, Tom? 
No, this is the, the EU needs everybody right now because the EU it is uh, capitalist Democrats. Oh yeah, yeah, they're socialists. That's right. So they need more people to tax. They need more. They need more places to spread it around, and they they want a unified EU because that was their that blue flag. You know, going back when they started it, this was the plan to bring everybody together, knock down the borders, bring it all together. And for someone to step out, especially, you know, Turkey is kind of like China and kind of like India. There's a lot of a um, lot of uh, low cost labor there. And um, let's go to the next story, which is Vinny's story. Denver homeless camp features pop up bar with rentable prostitution tents. I don't know why this is your story, I but love, you asked for it. I so mean, let's go through it. A makeshift open air tavern has appeared in a downtown Denver homeless camp featuring lounge chairs, umbrellas, and AstroTurf prompting complaints from city officials and residents to pop up Speakeasy, <laughs> located on 23rd Rob. If we can get a picture or video of this. And Champa Street has raised concerns about alcohol sales and prostitution activities within encampment. Uh, Denver Police uh, Patrol Division Chief Aaron Sanchez acknowledges Report of an open bar and alcohol sales at the encampment stating we're hearing there was an open bar, sales of alcohol, <laughs> things like that. Uh, Megan <laughs> Shea, an executive at the Homeless 8 Group st- uh, Stepped uh, Denver, expressed concerns about the makeshift bar serving alcohol to unwholesome daughter and encampment serving liquor to unwholesome reason there's no homeless problem. Okay. Anyway, so Vinny, what, what is I mean, going well, on over here? First of all, Pat, camp? I came to this, this company, Valuetainment. Your whole thing is entrepreneurship. And capitalism, if that right there doesn't scream it, these guys have an open bar outside. Like, say what you want. At least they're being, like, proactive and they're trying to make money. People are complaining. But, Pat, did you see, I mean, uh, Rob, go to that photo. That tent next to the couch, that's the process. Keep going. Keep going. That right there. So that's the a guy waits out there. There's, there's prostitution. Looks like somebody's butt is somebody's uh, butt. The oh, oh they're, they're, it's actions mm-hmm. happening in there. But oh. it's like, it's like, uh, yeah. You see that? Somebody's in there get, get, getting down, Tom. And me and Tom talked about this yesterday. It's like you can't make this up, and it's, it's happening. They haven't taken it down. People are just complaining, but that's how you know Denver is run. But then think about it. People are sleeping with prostitutes. Then they're gonna wind up getting the clap or syphilis. And guess what? We the people. Are gonna have to pay for their oh because they, they weren't wearing a mask they weren't, yeah. <laughs> exactly they're wee wees we have to pay for it and it's just it's unbelievable that we've gotten to the point where the homeless people could set this up and again all jokes aside set this up and all people are doing Tom is just there's complaints to the police and everything but it's going down it's still happening I'm just glad with the homeless issue that's going on in L A and how messy it is, disgusting it is and have a problem I'm, I'm glad we can kind of make light of this situation here so when I went to Denver and still hung out at this homeless camp last week. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm all about save that money. Yeah. But wow, the savings <laughs> oh at this. Uh, drinks were like 50 cents. Prostitutes were a quarter. I mean, it's like, look, I go down to Columbia from time to time. Everything there is 75% off. Yeah. Hotels, food, drinks, Everything. partying, women, whatever it is, yeah. it's 75% off. At this homeless encampment in Denver... 99% off. There Came with go. a free Pat- shot of chlamydia, which was amazing. That was <laughs> well, awesome. Pat, like, you got to con- come on. As a, as a businessman, I don't know. as an entrepreneur, can you imagine like the sales meetings? Like, hey, listen, guys, you better upsell on the liquor. And Sarah only turned three tricks yesterday. You know, there's actually a bad precedent here. Do you remember when uh, this place called the Mustang Ranch made headlines? And the Mustang Ranch is no. right outside of, of um, Las Vegas. And it made... Ra- made um, Headlines because they had failed to pay taxes. The Mustang, was it the Mustang Ranch. It's a different name. The, no, I know I what you're talking help, help, about. Help here. me out, Rob. Here, it was the Mustang. It was Ranch. that. It was that older white guy. He would hang no, out no, with no, all the chicks. No, no, no. Refused, chick. refused to pay their taxes, and they were a brothel out yeah. there. Yeah. And the U.S. government operated the Mustang Ranch for about six months <laughs> while they developed a tax really? plan. That was a that's true story. That's hilarious. And they had shirts that said, "I got screwed by the government." Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> go, go to the image of the guy. Go to that's, the image of the guy who ran this. Look at him. Yeah. Oh, that's a G. Well, if you, but if you think about it, Pat, at the end of the day, people talk bad about it. Prostitution is the oldest profession in the world. Do you know that, right? That's a fact. Prostitution yeah. Se- is... A- second oldest. The pimp was the oldest. <laughs> No, no. The pimp was the entrepreneur that saw what was going on. He's like, we got to we we got to put a CBA collective bargaining agreement. We got to get unionized. Yeah, exactly. That was actually the first union. Well, prostitute. Well, it's am I am I spitting the fact? Probably not the oldest farmers. I mean, come on. But profession. 
Come on, Wesley. All right, let's talk about uh, Trump DeSantis here. Did you guys see Kevin McCarthy, what he said about DeSantis and how DeSantis responded to it? Rob, if you got that video from Kevin McCarthy, if you can play that's right there. Here's Kevin McCarthy. He's asked about DeSantis and Trump. This is his answer. All of that, the policies that you mentioned of the Biden administration, is one reason that Donald Trump is leading in the polls right now. What's your take on this, that as we see more indictments of Donald Trump, he seems to be gaining in terms of popularity with the public? Will he be the nominee? I think he will be the nominee. And the thing is, President Trump is stronger today than he was in 2016 or 2020. And there's a reason why. They saw the policies of what he was able to do with America, putting America first, making our economy stronger. We didn't have inflation. We, we didn't have these battles around the world. We didn't look weak around the world. Well, it looks like Ron DeSantis is now trying to work with your colleagues who are pushing for a shutdown. Yeah, but I don't think that would work anywhere. A shutdown would only give strength to the Democrats. It would give the power to Biden. It wouldn't pay our troops. It wouldn't pay our border agents. More people would be coming across. I actually want to achieve something. And this is where President Trump is so smart that he was successful in this. You know, President Trump is beating Biden right now in the polls. Yeah, we have the poll. Let's show yeah. it. He's stronger than he has ever been in this process. And look, I... I I served with Ron DeSantis. He's not at the same level as President Trump by any shape or form. He would not have gotten elected without President Trump's endorsement. And so I believe our best step forward, pass so our appropriation bills so we're stronger. Take now, the wokeism out, fair, secure our play border. what to make DeSantis responds to him, I, you know, the, the clip where Ron has asked the question, Governor DeSantis, and here's his response uh, to what McCarthy said. And by the way, you would have to fast forward because for about, for about the first 10 seconds, you don't hear anything. The question is being asked. So, okay, go back a little bit. Go back a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, there you go. <laughs> first play. You're a fit belief, but it's not your time. <laughs> well, look, I would say, I mean, I think that if you look at what's happened with the Senate Republicans, uh, they have been able to make a lot of very closely. You know, look, Donald Trump, he supported Kevin McCarthy very strongly for Speaker. I don't think he would have won the speaker vote. Donald Trump was instrumental in him earning that speaker wow. gavel. And they worked hand in glove, really, throughout his whole presidency. Shots they were back. on the same team on every major spending bill that came down the, the pipe. And they ended up together adding $7.8 trillion to our national debt. Never in a four-year period hold back. is that wow. much yeah. than what they did together. And so he said that we're different. We are different. Because in Florida, we run budget surpluses. We've paid down almost 25% of our state's debt just since I've been governor. All the debt, all the way up for all of Florida's history, we've knocked off almost 25% of it. So it's a much different approach uh, to where we're doing it right. We have the number one rate in the economy. And then he gets asked the question, and he says... Uh, uh, he says uh, uh, Trump's election chance is close to zero if he's convicted of a felony. DeSantis said that. Oh, really? Close to zero. By the way, you're seeing a fight, which is good. Love it. They should have started earlier. But you're seeing a fight on what's taking place, what he's saying, how is he attacking back. Tom, do you think DeSantis stands a chance at all of going ahead of Trump? Like if you were to say the chances are no felony, nothing, does he stand a chance at all? No. Uh, I, I do not, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> forget the felony, forget the arrests. Head-to-head -head versus Donald Trump, the polls are speaking. But that's what the problem is. What the problem is, is he's run three campaigns. The shadow campaign before he declared, and it only was partly executed. A book launch, and then a horrible initial campaign in which DeSantis didn't mesh with the voters, didn't have a media management strategy, and now he had that... Um, house cleaning and he's lost donors and he's literally on campaign number three. And so I look at it like this, dude, none of those have elevated you in the polls. You've only lost in the polls progressively. I don't, it does matter what's happening to Donald Trump in terms of the indictments. However, head to head, even without those indictments, there is no chance for Ron DeSantis. And I think that He's blown the three opportunities he had, the shadow campaign, the first campaign, and the current campaign. And Pat, just a, a random observation. You notice how calm, cool, collected DeSantis is when he's speaking there, smaller crowd. I believe him. I trust him, and I, I feel him there. When he's on the big stage, it's very robotic. And But you notice that? Like, see how he's speaking? Like, this is what made people 
fall in love with DeSantis was during COVID. He Such had a very good feedback. Pat, Pat, he had this attitude, this nice, calm talking. He's, he's engaging. When he's on the big stage, he looks like he's a robot. If, if you guys didn't watch Governor, CNN, if great you didn't governor. watch Newsom last night on CNN, if you didn't watch Newsom last night on CNN, watch it. He did a clinic on how to handle tough questions. She mm -hmm. kept asking tough questions. He was very good the way he handled it. He, the Governor Ron DeSantis needs to privately, when nobody is around, watch Newsom's way of handling issues the way he did yesterday. He needs to watch that on repeat over and over and over and over again. His handling Sick. needs to be learned. This guy is, I think Newsom, you guys were saying earlier Clinton was great. I think Newsom is more gifted than Clinton in this area. Not policies. His policies cost the uh, state a lot of money. His policies cost people to want to leave. His policies got people to not trust him on the way he's, you know, taking care of families. His policies, you know, almost got him to do a recall. And you know what he said at the end? He says, she says, so any chances of you going to be running for a president? He says, me? No, I don't have any. I'm a governor. I'm not going to be running for a president. He says, heck, just a couple of years ago, they did a recall on me. Trust me, I've been humbled very well the last two years. People didn't want me here. Oh, wow. That's what he said. And by the way, you know what? I respect. I respect the fact that he said that. So those are the things that he's doing, where he knows how to win the people over. This guy's got a lot of skill set. When remember, I'm not talking policies. I'm not talking right for the nation. Yep. But this is a formidable candidate for the left to become a president one day. Yep. Formidable. You hit the nail on the head, Pat. Uh, we have this conversation all the time where there's two major indicators of who people are voting for, whether it's policy or personality. I would argue that the Republicans are way better at policy. There's policy wonks and guys like DeSantis and they, whether Nikki Haley, uh, they lack what Candace Owens called the it factor. Swag, pizzazz, Riz, personality, Riz. the riz, the whole, the sauce. You know, guys like Obama have it. Ob let's put Biden aside. He was elected because he just wasn't Donald Trump, period. But Gavin Newsom has it. His policies have led to a, <laughs> a vacancy of California. U-Haul prices are cost an arm and a leg to get the hell out of California and cost next to nothing to go to California. But he's a skilled politician. And don't forget uh, Gavin Newsom with his id factor is 10 years older than DeSantis. People forget DeSantis is 44, 45 years 45, old. Uh, he just okay. turned 45. He's still a young dude. You know, he's still got time. But look. He's going against something that we have never seen before with Donald Trump. We talk about you need to duplicate yourself. You can't duplicate a guy like Donald Trump. No. Nope. Go make a billion dollars in New York and real estate. Have a number one show on TV for a decade. Have swag. Be good with the ladies. Open up casinos. Bankruptcy. Yep, that's right. I know how to use the law. Democrat, Republican. Go try to do that, Ron DeSantis. So as much as Ron DeSantis has done a good job during COVID for yeah. two years, Trump's been doing it for 40 years. I got to tell you, though, the criticism around the Santa, uh, 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 President Trump got. Rob, can you pull up the clip about when Megyn Kelly asked him the question about can men be men, can men be women? While you're doing that, I'll read this clip about China, and then we'll come back to you China. if you can find that clip about uh, uh, on, uh, on Twitter. So then there were two. The disappearance of second Chinese minister sparked speculation. Chinese defense minister Li Shang Fu who recently warned of a new period of instability, has mysteriously disappeared from public view, mirroring the earlier unexplained disappearance of former foreign minister King Gang in June. This development has raised questions about, this, uh, about the stability of President Xi, Xi Jinping, uh, cabinet particularly as both Li and Qin were personally chosen by Xi, Making it, this is like a maze, guys. You got to track all these names. Making it challenging for him to <laughs> evade responsibility for the perceived failures. Lee Vanishing Act follows allegations of corruption and U.S. sanctions against him in 2018 for transactions with individuals linked to Russia's defense and intelligence sectors. U.S. officials believe that corruption is endemic in the People's Liberation Army, PLA, undermining Xi's efforts to modernize the military. Tom. I think you look at this the same way that we watch um, Russia. You know, you almost need a decoder ring with Russia. You say, what did Putin say? Who was standing with him? You know those pictures? Who's not standing with him? Where was he? What were the exact words he used? The same thing is going on in China. China is in the midst of a real estate crash. Um, it's huge. China is in the middle, middle of an economic correction, has their own issues on interest rates, and Mexico 
One week ago, we now get a greater percent of our imports from Mexico than we do China. It's it's all shifting. So they've got this huge economic shift and they've got this thing going on the world stage and they desperately want to, you know, go take Taiwan. And meanwhile, the they have their own form of shadow government. They've got they've got the <clears throat> the Communist Party that wants to kind of pull the strings and do things. And now Xi has had two guys, both of whom had corruption issues, that have been pulled out. Because remember, it's all face on that administration. It's all face. And once it looks like you've tripped or something's wrong and you 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 no longer say face, you know, this is what happens. And so when you see people disappearing, it's a sign that that area of government is needs a correction. And what you're seeing is they're making the correction by basically replacing these guys in midstream, but they don't do it as nearly as publicly or as eloquently as it happens in the West. But by the way, whatever happened to Jack Ma? Actually, what happened to Jack Ma? Remember, he, he was to discovered a... to have been living in, I believe it was, Rob, you can look this up. I believe he lived in Tokyo for two and a half years and made zero public statements yeah. about the CCP. You got to understand what happened with Jack Ma. We covered that when we were back in Dallas in 2020 and the disappearance of Jack Ma. And I did a whole um, segment on that for, um, for my show at the time. Uh, he went to a re-education camp. That's what I mean, happened. We know that. Yes. What happened to him? I, Meaning I, I, he's I, just laying low, not talking. Okay. And uh, so that's the the, the that, re-education that's the camp line. that they exactly. want to put Jordan Peterson through. That they wanted to do <laughs> in Toronto for different reasons. He needs to yeah. be educated on how to talk to people, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Well, but the bottom line is in these countries, uh, you just disappear, and uh, whether it's for a couple months, a couple years, or the rest of your life, you know. Shout out to Vladimir Putin. Um, that's what happens in these authoritarian yeah. regimes. Okay. And thank God that's not what's happened in America. At the very least, not they'll yet. just character not, not assassinate yet. you. That's yeah, what they do not, here. It's not, we're not there yet. Boy, this wouldn't be a bad thing if we had a strong president, would it? No, no, not at all. No, if we did, it would be a different situation. By the way, play that clip with Megyn Kelly and Trump. Megyn Kelly asked president this question. Here's Trump's answer that's got a lot of people mm. on the right upset. Can a man become a woman? Um, <laughs> Come on. In my opinion, you have a man, you have a woman. I, I, I think, I think part of it is birth. Can the man give birth? No, no. Although they'll come up with some. Still no. See, and, and, and Pat, everybody's always like, Vinny, you're such a Trump. Guess what? I don't like that answer. Say what you got. Why is that? Because he's on the fence. He doesn't want to piss off that certain group for for that for the voting. And it's like you should right then and there. I think that should have been a moment where he goes. Your men are men and women are women. That's it. And that come move on. Kind of going like because obviously he wants to make everybody happy. He's he's running for president. That answer I don't like. I don't no, like that. I, he got to step up at him and say no. Men are men and women are women. No I, men. I fully disagree with you. Why? I'll tell you why. Why? <laughs> if there's anybody that's not worried about making everybody happy, it's Donald Trump. He he don't give a shit. Everything he talks about is these you know fascist Democrat lefts. He don't give two shits about that side of the aisle. Right now, he's running in a primary and running away with it. I agree with you that he should just be like, yeah, I don't, I don't play this game. What the hell are we talking about? There should have been no um, should no, have been um. no pause. Yeah. So I agree with you that he should have doubled down on this. Yes. And whether it's Dylan Mulvaney or Bud Light or whatever, be like unacceptable because that's what his base wants. So I'm just saying he's not trying – what I disagree with you, he's not trying to appease everybody. He should be trying to appease his base. Yeah. You know, the question before that in the interview, I didn't realize that was two weeks ago, but yeah. I watched it last night was about Caitlyn Jenner. And, you know, he's like, the first time we ran, he goes, this wasn't even an issue in 2016. Yeah, Caitlyn Jenner, she wants to use the female bathroom. I don't really give a shit, whatever. Yeah. He's like, I knew Bruce when he was a man. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful man, athlete. Nice legs. Nice great guy. Legs. You know, he was like, as Trump does. And Bruce said he had full surgeries. Exactly. So he's not trans, not cross-dressing. Bruce said, I've had full, quote, the ship has sailed. My surgery, <laughs> I'm complete. The so, ship? Shout out to That the, was the quote. That's what Caitlyn said. Shout out to the dick Caitlyn song. Jenner said, shout that out your to ship the dick has song. sailed. Shout out to your dick so, song, Tom. So the point is this. I think Trump, it's it's actually good. like put yourself in Trump's position. Forget about talking points. Forget about what your base wants to hear. What the hell are we even like? Is it a man, a woman? We talk like this is something he's so not used to. Yeah. But actually, you know, if you see him on the campaign trail, at his rallies, he's you know, men are men, women are yeah, women. Yeah. He's doing this. Yeah. 
I don't know if it was just a glitch, a pause. He was just kind of, because he's usually very antagonistic. By the way, shout out to Trump going on Megyn Kelly, going on MSNBC, going taking CNN, the tough questions, CNN. like CNN with Kate and Collins. Like one thing like you have to respect about Trump, whether you like him or don't like him, the dude shows up. There's no chance that Joe Biden is sitting down there with Megyn Kelly for an hour fielding tough questions. Joe Biden won't do that for five minutes. It's one of those things where, you know, Trump, I understand why people don't like him, and I understand why people like him. Like, it's a double, like, two Tom, things can be true at once. Let's see what once. Tom has to say. Go for it. Uh, I, I think he should have been definitive. He's always been definitive, and that's what his base wants. Be definitive. Why would it have been so difficult for him to say, Megyn, why are we talking about this? Children are born male or female. Later in life, they want to have sex change. We have a controversy. People want to cross-dress and call themselves trans. And it says, if you have a sex change surgery like Caitlyn Jenner did, okay, then maybe you're part of the way there. You still can't give birth. But I don't know why we're having this conversation. What is this question? Tom, I've heard you do a better Trump before. No, but I feel that's like all you he could... had to say. Okay. And by the way, we know what the base would say. Thank you. Yeah. And it doesn't give a lot to the other side. It's like, Boom. Pat, how would you have responded to that basic question? What like is a woman? That. I mean, it's not even a question for me. I don't even know why we're having that conversation. Yeah. For me, it would have been a different answer. But Trump, uh, uh, Trump is Trump. Trump's going to give whatever answer he wants to give. And there is always strategy in his mind. He could have had a conversation with his camp 30 minutes prior to that, that mm -hmm. maybe one of his advisors told him something that in his mind, he's trying to put his next move together on the way he's going to answer or on the way he's going to have a rebuttal to this. Mm -hmm. He's a strategist. His brain is always going on what he's going to be doing. And at the same time, uh, the audience right now, like DeSantis, if DeSantis needed a victory in the last how long? Four months? Three months? He just had a victory this week. Yeah. This has so far been a good week for DeSantis. His response to Kevin McCarthy and Trump, what he just said to Megyn Kelly last week. So in the last 10 days, this has been a good week for Let's uh, DeSantis. Let's see if that changes the polls at all. It and, won't do and, anything and, for And when yeah. the debate is next week, I want to say, in California. In California. Um, by the way, Megyn Kelly, she is actually a full-on real journalist. Mm -hmm. Okay, she was asking tough questions. She was respectful. We all know what happened in 2016 when she's like, "You've called do women dogs, pigs, whatever," and he's like, "Only Rosie O'Donnell." Yeah, they addressed it. It was very interesting. Uh, but she is classy and uh, of first class journalist. And Pat, and, like he she was and, a Jones, she was a lawyer with Jones Day. Because I, I think that was the interview. Pat, did, did, was this the interview where she asked about the abortion and the time and the date or fifteen weeks or yes. something like that? Pat? Yes. And he still was like, "Well, we're I don't know." Like he's like you yeah. said, Pat. I would get people from both sides and I, sit down, and we would come down with a plan. That exactly. Makes sense for everybody, because what he's doing it, he saw that the abortion. What the Supreme Court did right before the midterms didn't wasn't Mark, didn't sit Mark. well with women in America. So he's mm -hmm. he's adjusting based on the case study he saw with midterms. Midterms revealed a lot to him of where America's at today, and he wants to win. So for him, he's looking at strategies on how to win the election. Googlers told to avoid using words like share and bundle, according to Bo uh, Bloomberg. Working at Google, you are told to not use these words. You know, apparently these are curse words if you work at Google. So let me get into the bottom of this with you. In a, in a Washington, D.C. trial, Alphabet and Google is accused of maintaining an illegal monopoly in online search. Government lawyers claim that Google encouraged employees to avoid creating a lasting records of potential misconduct, such as using Google Chat with the history of off feature, which automatically deletes messages after 24 hours. Google chief economist... Hal Varian's memo from 2003 memo encouraged, discouraged using phrases like cutting off their air supply. In 2009, Varian advised using very, uh, using query share instead of market share. Query share instead of market share. Hmm. Google employees were further instructed to avoid specific terms and metaphors related to antitrust issues such as scale, network effect, leverage, lockup. Lock in, bundle, and metaphors involved wars, sports, winning, or losing. Tom, what's going on here with Google? Google saw this coming a long time ago because when they were younger, uh, they and then they read the case study on the Microsoft antitrust suit, where Microsoft used a lot of those words and more, where they leveraged uh, PC makers who were pre-installing Windows, and then they were charging 
you know, extra fees for it and blocking any other operating system. That's what landed uh, Microsoft at the hands of uh, the Federal Trade Commission and the, uh, the massive Microsoft antitrust lawsuit. Google knows history. And what they've been attempting to do is set it up so that they limit the email and the um, uh, they're trying to limit the, the uh, breadcrumbs as much as they possibly can. So they were attempting to have their people not say certain things. So when the federal government comes in, like they did this week with the official big, this is a multi-year extravaganza here. This will take five years at least to play out, folks. They want the federal government to have very little to go with when they start going in and looking at what the email was. So All of your employees knew They're it. playing defense. That's right where I was going. going. They started playing this, defense right. years ago because they knew exactly what's going on with the Microsoft suit years gone by. Yeah. I, I, by the way, in any business, you got to play offense, you got to play defense. Offense is building the company, hiring workers. Defense is insurance. We're in the insurance industry. We get it. This is for the assumption that they're going to be dealing with an antitrust lawsuit. If they're not dealing with it already, whether they're in a monopoly or not, did we establish that it's 50% of the market as a monopoly? 50%, yeah. Okay, so obviously Google is a behemoth, um, and they're just trying to play a little defense right now, and they're trying not to use certain words that might trigger. trigger. Um, what, what year was this? 2011, it's saying? 2011, well, he was yeah. prepping the employees. Exactly. They saw this this light in the exactly. tunnel, and they knew it was so a way in advance. But why? Because their offense was like... The greatest show on turf, like the St. Louis Rams in 1999. Correct. Like they're just, they're killing it. They're going gangbusters. Make it look closer. Right. So <laughs> it's like, listen, let's, you know, let's not run up the score too much. Let's play some defense. Cover the spread. Don't double it. Exactly. So <laughs> listen, uh, we've all seen like the Mark Zuckerberg's uh, on trial and the CEO of Google for antitrust and monopoly. And they're just trying to play a little defense in this situation. So are you, so are you guys following this story with Deion Sanders and his glasses? Have you, have you followed how much he sold? So check this out. So a coach from the other side says, I don't like it. Uh, I, you know, when a person when has glasses parents, on and yeah. hat on. Says, I was taught when you talk to your parents, you take off your glasses and you take off your hat when you're talking to somebody. Yeah. What does Dion do? He doubles down. <laughs> Dion buys these glasses for every single one of his athletes. Okay, have you followed this? No, I haven't. He gives yeah. one to The Rock. He gives one to everybody. These glasses, he ends up getting some kind of, I don't know if it's equity or some kind of, a, a, he, he's sponsorship with them. They end up selling $1.2 million of these glasses. Then $4.5 million of these glasses. Okay, the glasses that he's been wearing. Yeah. And Rob, I want to send you this article. If you type in Dion Sanders $4.5 million, that's the article you want to look at. It's uh, 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 just type in Deion Sanders, four and a half million. Yeah, Prime that, 21. That's the one right there. You can pull that one up and let's see what that one says. That's slightly different than the one I have. Um, Deion Sanders sunglasses brand amasses four and a half million dollars in sales following a verbal back and forth with Jay Norval in week three. If you want to go a little lower so we can give the details. They're tired of all that stuff. Okay, go a little so I can. They're tired of all that stuff. They really are tired of it. And I sat down with ESPN today and I don't care if they hear it in Boulder. I told them I took off my took my hat off and I took my glasses off and I said when I talk to grown ups I take my hat and glasses off again the same thing that's what my mother taught, my mother taught me. me right and what does Dion do boom go up a little bit I think there's a tweet above it Robbie skipped right there the weak CSU coach said take his glasses off Dion Sanders has his own line of glasses with blenders and now has given a pair of every Colorado players. <laughs> they don't realize they just help me with business. That's is so what, funny. Look at, that, look at that right there. That is so funny. <laughs> he, That's he, gave so him funny. A, uh, he gave him, play that clip because it just stopped, Rob. Yeah. Let's give him some. He, he, <laughs> Let's give him some. It's, it's a market. Oh. Look at I'm going to give you <laughs> You can go to, there you go, look at this. Then he gives one to Rock. Rock's wearing one. Rob, if you can pause it. Then he gives one to uh, The Rock, and you can go back to the story, Rob. Then he gives one to The Rock. Rock's wearing one. At their last game, Rock shows up. Mm -hmm. Who else shows up? Everybody Bro, showed up. It was the biggest thing on, on earth. Did you actually see the game? Uh, it, yeah, of course I saw the okay. game. The game was like they were down something by 15 points or something. They came back. Fourth quarter, end yes. up winning it. Insane in game. In overtime. Uh, in overtime, a hit that was made that was a uh, uncalled for hit, late hit. 
There's a lot of controversy, yeah. but guess what? They're three and zero. Yeah, sure. look, look at the rocks wearing those exactly. glasses. It's look so at that. Funny. Well, for the for the younger generation out there, Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson are arguably the greatest athletes of all time. I think so. Okay, you know, you know who Deion said is the greatest athlete of all time? Deion Sanders ahead of ahead of Deion, ahead of uh, Bo Jackson. Who? Have you heard him say? No, his cousin, really? who was a crackhead. You ever heard him <laughs> tell the story? There's always that one crackhead that could have made it. He says, it, but my cousin, who was a crackhead, was the greatest athlete of all time. And what but crack got a hold of him. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm telling you. He says, then it's Bo Jackson. That's Deion Sanders. That's what Go he ahead. said. But Deion Sanders, for the younger generation, they probably, oh, he was a former NFL player. Like, nobody. Like, you think about Tyreek Hill, who's in the NFL these days. I know that our audience doesn't love sports. This is a pop culture conversation. Whether Whoever you think is the best player in the NFL, most athletic, Dion ran circles around that dude. He played cornerback, lockdown, like island, shutdown, punt, return, punt, return, punt returns. returns. He would do the thing at like played he's, he played baseball. Nasty. Atlanta. He was nasty. He's crazy. And now he's raising a new generation. He's got two kids on the team. The quarterback, who's a Heisman front runner, he Shadur Sanders, thirty yards, and is a beast. Yeah. He didn't he's just got, put his son on the team. Yeah. He's probably top three quarterbacks in college football Correct. right football. now. And what yeah. you don't know is he has another son. He has three sons. One is Deion Sanders Jr., who's not playing. He's got two other sons. One is a playing his old position, cornerback, same number, 21. First play of the game, first quarter, pick six to the house, Pause. boom, like the beginning of the game. He's, he's actually a, a good father. He's a good man. He's a brilliant marketer. And he's turning out to be an amazing coach. He went to, before Colorado, he went to Jackson State and dominated there. He took this opportunity. People forget when I was, I mean, a huge Miami Hurricanes fan. There it is right there. His yep. son just beginning of the game. First score, bang, pick six. Pick six. Colorado man. was a powerhouse right. in football. Uh, yeah, but, but Rashad Salam, Cordell Stewart, all these guys were good. Rob, stop the video. Just good, change Rob. it. Uh, yeah. Um, they were competing yeah. against national championship against University of Miami, yep. which The Rock was at the game. But you have people like Dwayne Wade being like, dude, I've never watched a football College. game yeah. in my car, on my phone, but that's what primetime Dion is doing. And he's capitalizing this. But as much as this is a feel good story, uh, they're number, I think, 16 in the country right now. Number 19, I apologize. They travel to Oregon uh, Oregon's this nasty. Saturday. Oregon is a top 10. Oregon is favored by 21 points. That's so even, he better sell some sunglasses this week because they might be three and one by the time that this week this is, is out. This is totally random, though. Didn't he, uh, he had like his foot amputated, uh, Dion? Didn't he? Not foot, toe. Or toe? Like I don't know, Rob. Can you check if he got? I, yeah. I don't know, but that does that crazy? Di I don't, diabetes. Is it, is it diabetes for him? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Like. Deion Sanders you remember remember when we did the uh, yeah, he, had, he had two toes amputated, not legs. Two toes. Two toes. Got you. Remember yeah. when we did the Antonio toes, Brown toes, yeah. uh, interview? Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, people are all, dude, that was the craziest interview of all time. The first hour was a shit show. The second hour was actually a pleasant conversation, yeah. as weird as it was. Yeah. But what one of the conversations that turned the, the tenure and tone of that conversation was when I asked him, did you see what Dion said about you to Antonio Brown? And he's like, well, what'd he say? Because he respect everyone respects the hell out of Dion. He goes, oh, no, if you if you sh if you sh make it to the Hall of Fame, he'll show up for you. He doesn't even go back, but he'll go for you. He's like, oh, really? Like Dion said that kind of a thing? Like he has the respect yeah. of everyone, football players, fans. Dion had a Hall legendary song, Must Be the Money. Must be the money. Remember this or yes. no? Every I time. I tell him to stop. I mean, this guy, by the way, Must be yeah, they're money. right there with the pink. Don't play it. Don't play it, Rob. It was the pink outfit. He was so yeah. G. He had on that yeah. uh, uh, back in the days. Yeah, but Dion, the other day I made a list because people were saying the greatest athletes of all time. And everyone's, oh, you're the greatest athletes of all time. Or Jim these Thorpe. Names. I'm like, no, the, there's a difference between the greatest winner and the greatest athlete. Yes. Those are two different human beings. Yeah. You're talking about the greatest winner. Yeah. Tom Brady's not greatest... beating Dion in a race. Exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. To me, the greatest athlete is this guy. I had him as num my number one. Ahead of Bo Jackson. What, what, uh, where, where was Bo in your top LeBron five? LeBron was number two. Bo was three. Wow. I believe LeBron was two. Because LeBron just makes no sense. For him to run as fast as he does, no. jump as high as he does, and be as big as he is, and have the physique as he has, it just makes no sense. And Bo Jackson, Pat, you know this. He's not he... in my top five greatest winners, obviously. Obviously. He's yeah. in the top five greatest. Bo, Bo Jackson, Bo knows. athleticism, when he hit the scene and he was running up on the left field wall and people didn't know, he threw somebody out 
from the warning track yeah, yeah. to home. And people, Sick the announcers, athlete. just like, why can't they like, I've never yeah. seen anything like that in my life. No. He was ridiculous. But yeah, primetime was, because we would watch these. Dude, I was old, I'm old enough to watch. What's the fastest you ran a 40 in, Tom? What's the fastest you ran a 40 in? I don't think I ever measured. <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you my two mile, you know, but uh, yeah. what was your two mile? My two mile, I I got into the elevens. Seriously, that's very good. Uh, my two 40? miles, my I don't uh, my my forty. I never really timed my forty, but my two mile was insane in the military. Like you, wouldn't, it was like stop, up. Pat. I was sprint my energy. I would just sprint the whole thing. What, what was uh, yours, Pat? My two mile. No, you're forty. <laughs> my my forty. I was I was a four six four seven forty. I was a fast guy. Yeah, yeah you had four, speed. I had speed. I, what was yours? Well, you're a four 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 five. No, well, I played college football, but I ran a four five nine. If I could have got it down to four three lower, yeah, which it was not possible. But <laughs> four two um, four three is insane. You go four. This three. guy four two seven, but it's uh. Well, Adam saw my 40 at, in Vegas, and I tore my Your 40th hamstring. birthday. Rob, pull up the tweet I just gave you. <laughs> That's right. Pull up the tweet I just gave you. This, this is when you know we do stories like this at the end of the podcast story because this is officially for us, folks. For those of you that could care less about sports, we kind of like sports. This is who I had as my top five athletes. Zoom in a little bit. Let me see that. Because go to the bottom. Go to the bottom. First show the other guy on the bottom. Brewski had this. He had Serena Williams at five. This what? is athletes. 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 They should change it to winners. He had Serena, yes. then Brady, then uh, Ruth, then Ali, then Jordan. Good right? Call. Those are winners. Go to the top. That's like icons. Yeah. I had Deion Sanders, then LeBron, then Bo Jackson, then Jordan. Then I had Jim Brown and Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain was a, was a machine when you read about the guy. And Jim Brown was obviously insane. The greatest dominators, MJ and Brady had one. Then I have Messi, Ali, Woods, Ruth is who I have. Anyway. I, I like Pat. He's just making up. He'll two, the two guys will be at the first thing. Yeah, whatever. because MJ and Brady, to me, it's uh, a yeah. – there it's, it goes. If you say he's the Brady of this or he's the MJ of this. Yes. But, Pat, you are right. There's a difference between a pure athlete versus a winner versus an icon. Night and day. Right? Yeah, because yeah. a winner has can have like, – like Brady, he's a great quarterback, but the whole system around him from the coach to the wide receivers to the line to – Everybody, look. They let, help let's a get lot. let's get real here. Tom Brady is not a top one thousand athlete of all time. Pure right. athlete, winner, heart of a champion, icon, yeah. Mount Rushmore, and I think that's what you're basically that's solving for. Is Deion, Deion, Deion the Sanders? And by, the, by the way, and by the way, on on Tiger Woods, if he doesn't hit a fire hydrant and hit, take six years off of his career. He would have shattered, not just beaten, shattered Jack Nicholas's Nicholas record. records. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why you got to be careful who you marry, bro. Well, and also you decide that maybe you're going to go be a member. You want to be a Navy SEAL. You're reading the book. They actually not, not injured you himself be, Now you got to be decide who you marry. You know, when you do and you're not done, take your time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you're like still you're, you're marrying and you want to have 16 – Folks from the, uh, you know, modern-day Olean fans, back in the days, you know, adults, it's, it's a different game you, that he played. You know but, what would be interesting here? Can we what? pull that list back up? I want, just want to – I'm going somewhere Twitter, here. Go to tweet, the tweet now, go back I to that thing. I want to know how many of those guys, the greatest of all times, yeah. the winners, the athletes, the icons, how many were married, not married, divorced, had situations Good. going on on the low. I don't know. Uh, well, LeBron I mean, at the top of the list. He's married to his high school sweetheart. Respect to him. Michael Jordan remarried actually a Miami girl that, that I know. Well, but Ty you talk about, I mean, Messi's married, but you talk about Tiger Woods. Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. Homeboy Ty was playing out there. So was Babe Ruth. Well, yeah, Muhammad Ty Ali wasn't exactly. You know, a, uh, Tiger was number one until they, uh, they got mad at him for the, the hookers and the strippers. Then once that got, everything went down. Poor guy, dude. They should have just left, let, let him hook up with the strippers, and he he would have stayed number one. <laughs> just let him. Just let him. Yeah. Tiger Woods. I think his wife, who became a, a hundred million uh, dollar woman, ninety million, she probably had something to say golfer. about that. She's, she's amazing. Golfer. She was a goddamn au pair, and now she's worth a hundred million dollars. God bless her soul. Yeah, how, how many random dudes just are worth a hundred million dollars because they got wifed up by some chick? Zero. And Pat, I don't know if you guys know this now. I'm the want. dude playing the dude. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the dude. But think about what do you mean, you Pat, people? This is, this is random because I don't know why we thought of because Tiger, do you guys remember what happened though? Why the whole fight happened and initiated everything? Mm -hmm. Tiger's home drinking, he's home with his wife. The stripper called the house. 
Okay, so he runs out. He gets. This is when the, house phones were a thing. This is when the house phone. No, I'm being dead serious. Yeah. And his what? He's in the in that truck. She's beating. Yes. The car with, with the a golf, golf club. With, and I thought, Pat, how funny it would have been if when he Tiger Woods out, made the U-turn into he, the fire hydrant and, he and hit got the fire stuck. Hydrant. But think about it. His wife is hitting it with the golf club. This is Tiger Woods, the best golfer of all time. Yeah. Do you think because he was drunk as she's hitting it, he's like, "Baby, wait a minute." You gotta <laughs> you're not, babe. I'm sorry, but you're a reflection of me. Yeah. The neighbors are watching it. That's my, that's my three Great iron. Point. By the way, yeah. he wasn't seen for two weeks, and he's a people that are commentators who know things in golf says he got hit. He got yeah. hit. Of course. That's the reason that no one saw him for two weeks. He but, said he got hit. But neighbors said her follow through shot was horrible and yeah. it looked like it looked like Very crap. She ended up in the beach. Yeah. Gang. Okay. All right. So here we this go. This is fun. Tomorrow, DVD. tomorrow, nine AM, Tom Brady's interview premieres. Bum, bum. Race for impact. Thursday, we have a wild uh, discussion here on the podcast. Myself with four folks that'll be here. It'll be interesting. Tune in. And we will be doing many more of those because I feel eventually I want to have the biggest representative of the Muslim community with the biggest representative of the Jewish community and the biggest representative of the Christian community for us to do podcasts together. That would be sick. Maybe even a live discussion together and see what we can discuss and unify. See what there is in common and what differences we have. Anyways, have a great day, everybody. Tune in tomorrow and Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sick.